Okay, can you guys hear me? Yeah, I Father, Son, Holy Spirit, in Jesus' name. All right. <clears throat> Keep praying for me, folks, by the grace and mercy of the Lord Jesus Christ. In his grace and mercy, he's allowed me to lose a lot of the fat that was hindering me and causing me health problems, you know, about 100. I still have about 50 to go. And these shirts now are getting much big. I need a new wardrobe. Pray I can lose the rest of that week, <clears throat> not for pride or arrogance, but for my health, to be healthy for his glory and for my children in Jesus' name. So anyway, <clears throat> I got my earpiece on because my neighbor next door sometimes blasts the music real loud. So I don't want to be a nuisance or a hindrance to him because when I'm live streaming, I get pretty loud and they haven't complained. So pray for mercy and grace that I can be the be Jesus, show the love of Jesus Christ to my neighbors and be used of the Lord to bring them to Christ and not cause them to stumble. All right. I'm live streaming right now. Your package just came. I'm live streaming. You know, I work too. I know you don't think I work because I'm not like you in a car all day delivering food. All right. Sorry about that. Okay. As you can see, I haven't trimmed my beard because some people told me to, hey, let your beard grow, my pepper beard, so I look older than I am. Right? When I trim it, I look younger. That's right, the 24-inch pythons. So, but uh, when I don't trim it, I look just as old and ugly as Sahi Christian, if he's here. I don't know if he's here. Sahi Christian, are you here? <clears throat> no one as ugly as this dude. And yet he thinks he's good looking. But hey, it's okay. It's called self-deception. So guys, uh, if you hear music, bear with me because this is the nature of live streaming when you're not in a professional studio. You got to do it from your house. <clears throat> and so again, that's what it is. What's up, Melanie? What it is? What it be like? All right, everyone here, I'm waiting for the regulars to show up. You know who you are. Wasn't it ironic yesterday? Right at the end of my session, we got over 500 people. Where do they come from? Where do those 500 come from? Usually, in, uh, glory to Jesus, by his grace and mercy, we're now up to 200, a little more than 200. But, man, at the end of the session yesterday, like, man, 500 people. Yeah, I don't know where they came from. Riaz, you don't remember? Were you not listening, Riaz? Riaz, I made you a mod for a reason, and yet you were not here till the end to listen. But you'll run to Abdullah Samir, and you'll run to Apostate Prophet, <clears throat> and you'll join their live streams, Riaz. And you'll even listen when they have apostates, those who claim to be Christian, coming on attacking Christianity. Should we be leery of you, Riaz? Huh? Mm -hmm. Should we? Maybe in time. Turb, why do you have David Wood re-uploads? I don't get that. Oh, snap. What well, snappy snap, Mike? What it be like? What it is? Okay, folks, so pray in Jesus' name that the Lord Jesus will bless this session, <clears throat> that the internet connection will stay strong, that the, the modem is, you know, running perfectly well. Pray I don't get distracted. Pray by the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ you don't get distracted and that the music won't throw me off. You know, we'll begin in a word of prayer in a minute, and then... We'll, be, we'll begin the session, so let's just wait. Uh, just to let you know, I wanted to start a little later, but I decided I'm going to start right now. I was just listening, and this is something important, something important for you to <clears throat> keep in mind. I was just listening to the live stream on Facebook. I think they call that live stream too. To the funeral service of a young man. His name is Nail. Tadrus, he goes by the English name Neil. What makes his death so heartbreaking? I was just listening to it right now, and I was just taken aback. Uh, Nail Tadrus, Neil Tadrus, died, I believe, was Friday. They say it was a heart attack. He was probably in his late 30s, early 40s, left behind a very beautiful young wife and four beautiful children, the oldest of which couldn't be... <clears throat> older than 10, right? So talk about devastation. You leave a young wife with four young kids, young kids, and his mother and father outlive him and his brother and sister. Talk about devastation. So I was listening to the funeral service. It was at St. Mary's Orthodox Church. 
St. Mary's Orthodox Church, and I can hear in the background the mother weeping. Yeah, you know, just thinking about it breaks my heart. Not for the young man. If that man knew the Lord Jesus Christ, and then he entered into glory. He's pain-free. No more pain, no more suffering, no more misery. The devastation wouldn't be so much for him. The devastation would be for his young widow. Very beautiful family, handsome young man, a beautiful young wife, and four beautiful children. And now her world is destroyed, right? Can you imagine if you're the widow? You're young. She's probably still in her 30s. Four young children, the oldest of which couldn't be older than 10, probably even younger than 10, from what I recall from the photos. Can you imagine the world of hurting she's in and the devastation of the children? Right. Yeah. And can you imagine the devastation of his parents? Right. No, he's not Greek. He's Arabic. Right. They speak Arabic. It's just amazing. I was just watching it. So I wanted to listen to it all the way till the end. But they finished the formal <clears throat> aspect of the funeral, the prayers. And his brother came up. His brother's name was Salim. St. Mary's Orthodox Church. And just devastating. And I could hear in the background. It's, it's being live streamed. I could hear in the background the mother weeping. Man, it moved me in my spirit. Is that what they are? Are they Egyptian? They didn't look Egyptian. They look more like they would be Jordanian. Yeah, yeah. He did say Jordan. Uh, Snow Leopard, he said Jordan. I remember the brother saying the Tedrus family, even those in Jordan. So I believe they're Jordanian, right? So if you believe in Jesus, and obviously you do, that's why you're here. Jesus is risen. Folks, let me just remind you. We're not reading about a mythical cartoon character. We're not reading a make-believe story. We're reading about an individual who walked this earth an historical person who walked this earth. And we're affirming an historical event, an event that eyewitnesses claim took place in time, space, in history, at a location. The event is the resurrection of Jesus. He left the tomb empty on the third day. He destroyed the power of death, grave, sin, and Satan. And he is truly alive. He's risen. He is alive. Whether you believe it or not, He's alive. He is life. And if you truly believe in him, you cannot die. Physical death and simply you being transferred into his heavenly presence where you will dwell basking in his infinite love, compassion, and mercy until he returns to earth and then resurrects your body and unites you to your body, a body that he will make immortal and morally incorruptible. Jesus is real. He's alive. So it's not physical death that bothers me what bothers me is the devastation and the pain of those you leave behind right of those you leave so i'm getting moved in my spirit right now as i think about it because watching that young man i saw his lifeless body and and because it was an open casket you can see it <sighs> watching that lifeless body because his spirit has so left his body he's alive with jesus because he was a follower of jesus christ but the devastation and the pain of that young wo woman, his wife, right? What about the children? You know, the children. Where's daddy? Can you imagine? You're the mother. And every day they wake up, mama, where's baba? Because they're too young, right? Even the one that's close to 10 gets an idea that baba's gone, but still, you know, it's, it's devastating, really. So, yeah, it's, it's moving me in my spirit to even talk about it. But I, that's what I was watching. You know, I just amazing. Yeah. His name is Nail. What a nice name. I didn't know Nail uh, is the equivalent of Neil in English. Nail Tedros. Keep his wife and children and parents in, in your prayers. Yeah. It's amazing. <sighs> because now, remember... He has four children left behind, a young widow, but he's also devastated the heart of his parents, specifically the mother. I think the worst fear of a parent is a child die before you. 
So I ask Jesus Christ, my Lord, in his love and mercy for my children and I, I die before anything happens to my daughters, that I don't see anything happen to them. Because I will be devastated, heartbroken. May Jesus protect me from that. But it's devastating, man. So, you know, just watching that. All right. I know. Didn't mean to start the session this way, but that's what I was watching, right? As a reminder, folks, as a reminder, we're one heartbeat away from death. I may die today, honestly. I may die today. I don't just say that to say it. You don't know when you're going to die. You really don't. The Lord does. And may the Lord prepare me for my death to embrace it, to know that I will pass through and see his glorious face. So we need to be prepared, folks. We need to be prepared. It's kind of devastating hard, but anyway, it is what it is to see that in a young man. Can you imagine if you're an atheist? Now imagine if atheism was true. What a pitiful, pathetic uh, life because we basically live for nothing. There is no purpose to our life and existence, right? <clears throat> wow. Ligger system. You said your extended family went through that, 35 with three kids under six. Wow. The 35-year-old, was that the man, the father, or the mother? The legal system. Was that a father or a mother? Wow, wow man. Man. May God comfort those who lose children. I just want to assure you, because I know there are some people here who have lost children. I don't say this to tickle your ears. I want to assure you. I want to assure you of this. Your children are in the loving arms of Jesus. They're being loved by him with a love that you could not give them. I'm not trying to downplay your love for them. They are being loved with an infinite love and a joy that words cannot describe. And Jesus has embraced them in his love, his arms, and he's keeping them safe until your re reunion with them. You will be united with them. Right. So just remember that. Just remember that. It's cools. Check out William Lane Craig, Reasonable Faith. He has tons of resources on how to witness effectively to atheists. So rest assured. Rest assured. Your children who die are in the arms of the Lord Jesus Christ. Rest assured because Jesus lives. They live. And you will see them again. You will hear these words one day, especially you mothers. You're going to hear the Lord call you by name. He's going to call you by name. And he's going to say, woman, behold your child. Behold your children. And then he's going to tell your child or your children, behold your mother. And now embrace one another. Because death will never, ever separate you from one another ever again. That's Jesus' promise. Louisa, that's Jesus' promise to you. You will hear the words of your master saying, Louisa Campbell, enter into the rest of your master. Well done, good and faithful servant. And he's going to say, Louisa, behold your sons. And he will say to your sons, behold your mother and embrace her. Because she eagerly awaited this day to see your faces again. Right? Wow, warrior woman. God's timing, huh, warrior woman? I had no idea. Today is your... Guys, read what our sister, who's Ahmad here, said. I've been watching quietly, and today's the anniversary of my son's death. Born, stillborn. I needed this today. Thank you. Now, tell me how real God is, how amazing God is. Guys... How real God's, God is, how amazing God is, that today I'm talking about this subject, not aware that Warrior's Woman is remembering her stillborn, right, the death of her, her son. You see how real God is, how amazing God is, that he's alive and he knows your needs, he knows what you're going through, and he'll meet you where you're at. So with that said, let's look at a few passages, and then we're going to begin. I don't know if Protestant is here or first last. Who's here? Oh, the mods that post versus Dodo's mother, huh? Why is she? COVID 19. 
Hey, is the mods here? I mean, they are here. I mean, those who post verses or no, or am I left to myself again? COVID-19, may the Lord Jesus have mercy on her. So it's not a joke after all. I guess the uh, Protestant loser and uh, first and the last loser, they're not here, huh? All right, I'm going to have to quote the verses. Snow Kenya? Yeah, yeah. All right. Snow Leopard, do, you can, can you do that? If not, I'll just post. If you can, then that's fine. Uh, Alasas, yeah, Alasas. That's good to eat, molasses. All right, folks. So Snow Leopard wants to volunteer to help me to help you. God bless you. If not, I'll do it if it's too much of a problem. Okay, folks, this is for you who lost children. I want to encourage you with these words before I begin, right? Let's go to John chapter 14, verses 18 to 19. John 14, verses 18 to 19. Thank you, Snow Leopard. I didn't know that leopards like to play in the snow, but be that as it may, you know more than me. Muhammad ibn Jaris, the peace of the Lord Jesus Christ upon you. Okay, let's go there. John 14, verses 18 to 19. I'm not an expert on animals. Even though all my life they've called me a beast, I'm still not that knowledgeable when it comes to animals. But I am one gorgeous animal. So up, are you able to do it, brother? If not, I'll just get ready. Well, let me just say. Uh... Okay. Hold on, come and listen. Sorry about that. Sorry about that. Oh, Protestant loser is here. All right, guys, thank you. He's here. And by the way, because let me give you, let me remind you of a passage, guys. Let me remind you of a passage. Titus 1.15 says, to the pure, all things are pure. But to the corrupt and unbelieving, nothing is pure. Their very minds and consciences are corrupt. Now, you guys thought I was insulting Protestant loser when I called him a loser. And you guys thought I was insulting first and the last loser. Let me tell you why you need to check yourself. Are you ready? Snow, thank you, my brother or sister. I don't know if it's a brother or sister. Protestant is here. When I called him a loser, I was complimenting him. Are you ready now? Let me let me show you why it's a compliment. It's for those you haters who thought I was attacking him. Okay, how you doing, brother? Sorry about that. Because as Hafsa knows, because I've called her a loser, like it's going out of style. When I call a Christian a loser, it's a compliment because I mean you've lost your burden of sin. You're a loser. You lost that weight of sin. So rejoice in being a loser. See, you guys are all haters. I don't know what to say to you guys. Always negative. Sam, that's not Christ-like calling someone a loser. Well, he is a loser. He lost his weight of sin when he turned to Christ. Now, to comfort my brothers and sisters who may have lost children, like Louisa and Warrior Woman, Protestant loser. Post, post John 14, verses 18 to 19. John 14, verses 18 to 19. Yeah, it is a plot twist, isn't it? Positive thinking, people. Thank you, Satu. It's half full, not half empty. Thank you, Sophia. And I plan to lose more. Now, warrior woman and Luisa and everyone else, pay attention to what our Lord says. I will not leave you comfort, comfortless. I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. Yet a little while, and the world seeth me no more. But ye see me, because I live, ye shall live also. Because I'm alive, you will live. Because I live, and I live forever, you will live also. Here's his promise, and Jesus can't lie. I'm alive, and if you believe in me, you cannot die, but you will live forever. Now, John 14, verses 1 to 4. John 14, verses 1 to 4. So let me give you these words to encourage you and reassure you. Your loved ones who've died in Christ, they're more alive than you and I because they're free from pain, misery, depression, and sin. John 14, verses 1 to 4. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. Notice what our Lord is telling you, and Christ cannot lie. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. Here's my promise, Jesus says. I cannot lie. I promise you. All you who believe in me, I have mansions prepared for you. And I promise you, I will come 
take you to be with me and bring you into your mansion. Trust me. Don't be afraid. Don't let your heart trouble you. Be comforted by my words. I have promised you and I cannot lie. And then verse 4. And whither I go, you know, and the way you know, you know, that's my promise to you. So you see, warrior woman, Louisa, the Lord Jesus cannot lie to you. He is real. He's alive. He's the God of truth. And he's promised you, your sons are in their mansions because I came and I took them to myself. And I will take you to myself and you will see your sons and you will dwell with them in my presence forever. Don't. Let your heart trouble you to doubt my words and think otherwise. John 5, 24 to 25. So let me comfort you with these words and we can begin. John 5, 24 to 25. So you guys pray for our sister warrior woman. She's crying because the words of Jesus are penetrating her heart. And Jesus is speaking from his word to her and filling her with love and joy. So pray for her and Luis and others. John 5, 24 to 25. John 5, 24 to 25. Verily, verily, I say unto you, truly I say to you, I cannot lie, and I speak the truth. Now notice what he says. He that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me. You are now hearing the words of Jesus, and you believe the Father sent him. So he's talking to you, warrior woman, Louisa, all of you. Hath everlasting life, and shall not come into condemnation, but has passed from death unto life. You will never die again. You have passed over death and entered into my life, the life I give you. Verily, verily, I say unto you, verse 25, the hour is coming and now is when the dead shall hear the voice of the Son of God and they that hear shall live. You who are spiritually dead, you heard the voice of the Son of God speaking life to you and you responded and you cannot die anymore. That's Jesus' promise. You cannot die anymore. Everyone with me there? John 8, 51. Exactly, Pedro. John 8, 51. Let me reassure you with the words of the master. Amen, Luisa. John 8, 51. Thank you. Thank you for the super check. Thank you, Nicola. Verily, verily, I say unto you, if a man keep my saying, he shall never see death. Post that two more times, Protestant. May the word of Jesus penetrate your hearts and your souls and your minds by the power of the Holy Spirit. Here's what Jesus said. Verily, verily, I say unto you, if a man keep my sin, he shall never see death. He shall never see death. He shall never see death. Do you believe that? Do you believe that? So warrior woman, your son cannot be dead if Jesus is alive. Louisa Campbell, your sons cannot be dead if Jesus is alive. Can't be possible. Only atheists that behave themselves and not blaspheme because then I'm going to humiliate you. You understand? Your son cannot be dead if Jesus is alive. The only way your son can be dead is if Jesus isn't alive. And contrary to these atheists, he is alive to their chagrin. Is that clear? Do you guys understand? Does that making sense? Okay. Let me give you a final one so we can begin. John chapter 11. John chapter 11, verses 23 to 27. John chapter 11, verse 23 to 27. Listen, listen attentively. Okay. Jesus saith unto her, Martha, when her brother had been dead for four days, Lazarus was dead for four days and he's in the tomb. Jesus saith unto her, thy brother shall rise again. Thy brother shall rise again. Martha saith unto him, I know that he shall rise again in the resurrection at the last day. Now notice what our Lord said. Remember, Jesus is truth. He cannot lie. Notice what he said to her. Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. I am 
the resurrection and the life. Al Ba'ith Al Hayat in Arabic. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, ye shall yet shall he live. And he <clears throat> that liveth and believeth in me, and whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Shall never die. One more time. You cannot die if you believe in Jesus from your heart. Impossible. Because Jesus is alive and cannot die. And cannot lie. And then he says to her, believest thou this? Do you believe what I just said? So he's saying that to every one of you. Jesus is saying, I know who I am. I know who I am. I'm God in the flesh, the son of the father. I am life. I am resurrection. Death has no power against me. I have power over death. And I will destroy the power of death in the grave to assure you of who I am. I know who I am, but I want you to believe who I am for your benefit. So do you believe me? And notice what she says. She saith unto him, Yea, Lord. Yes, Lord. I believe that thou art the Christ, the Son of God, which should come into the world. So, folks, do you believe Jesus? Do you believe Jesus? Deanne Collins, I don't know if I should take your question seriously or you're challenging me because I'm insulted by your question, but that's okay. If you believe Jesus and you believe he's alive and he cannot die, then you can't believe that your loved ones who died in Christ are dead. Physically, they're dead. It only means that their soul spirits left their bodies, but they are still consciously alive, basking in his infinite love, joy, and peace. So you can't doubt they're alive. If you do, then you doubt Jesus, plain and simple. He said, you can't die. You can't die if you believe in me. You passed over death. Only God has the power over life and death. And because Jesus is God, he has power over life and death. The Aiden Collins. But focus. Only God can say, I'm the resurrection and life. No creature can say that. And Jesus said, I'm the resurrection and life. So now, guys, can you now bear witness? Guys, pay attention. Do you want to see how sovereign and real Jesus is? That he knows your needs and he works everything in such a way to comfort you and meet you where you're at to remind you how real he is and he loves you? I had no idea, number one, that today Warrior Woman is struggling over the anniversary of the death of her son. I didn't know that. Today of all days. What are the odds that I'd be listening to the funeral service of a young man who died right before I begin the live stream, moves me in my heart to talk about death and how Jesus conquered death and those who are dead in Christ are alive. And she's listening as she's remembering her son without me knowing it. So you see how real Jesus is that he orchestrated all of this because he knows that warrior woman needed a word of comfort because she's now thinking of her sin, and her heart is broken. Tell me how real Jesus is. I didn't know that. Warrior woman, did I know that? Did we talk prior to this? You see? That's how real Jesus is. And it's a reminder to her and everyone else. You know what Jesus is saying? Uh, jati. Do you want me to block you? jati. Are you a, another dog being used of Satan to cause distraction? You want me to block you? Jati, tell me because you're wasting my time and insulting me. Hold on, guys. We got a distraction from the devil. Jati, however you pronounce your fake name. Do you want me to block you for being that stupid, for being a puppet for Muslims? I'm waiting for your answer because I'm going to block you if you don't answer me. Because you're being a distraction and nuisance of the devil, distracting the brothers and sisters. Why are you now a dog of the Muslims and keep repeating what Muslims say? Are you their dog or are you a child of God? Are you their dimmi? Do you pay them jizya? Do you want to hand your wife over for them to violate? Why are you their messenger and repeating what they say? And serving their agenda to distract us from the glory of Jesus. When I'm comforting a mother who lost her son. 
What are you gaining by being used of the devil to be the messenger of the Muslims? I'm going to ask whether I should block you or not because I'm very tempted to silence you and block you for being that stupid and insensitive to the needs of these women who are remembering the death of their sons because you're a selfish pig thinking of yourself instead of them. Okay, get him out of here. I'm not going to take him out. I don't want this guy here. Get him out of here. Have no concern for these mothers who are grieving the loss of their kids. Guys, please don't play with me. I'm not here to offend you, but I'm not here to tickle your ears. I'm trying to comfort mothers who lost their sons, but you guys want to be the messenger boys of the Muslims. Oh, the Muslims will say this. Then go to the Muslim channels. Don't come here because I'm going to embarrass you. My goodness. No sensitivity whatsoever. No compassion for these women that I'm trying to comfort them. May the Lord Jesus comfort you women. Even you men who've lost children. May the Lord Jesus rebuke this distraction of Satan. Focus. So let me remind you again. According to the words of your Lord who cannot lie. According to the words of your Lord who cannot lie. Your sons are alive. Don't you doubt it. Okay. Stupid man keeps telling. Well, let's say this. Then go become a Muslim. You're already there than me. So may the Lord comfort you, women. I hope you're comforted, warrior. And I hope you're comforted, Luisa. And anyone else who lost a child, I'm sorry for that satanic distraction. May the Lord Jesus be glorified. Okay. So hope you're comforted. Romans, you want me to send you to Muhammad Hijab's Dawah booklet? I can send you there if you want, because you still didn't get what I just said. You're not getting it. Foolish Christians not knowing that they're being used of the devil. Okay. Praise the Lord. Sorry, guys. Understand Satan's going to try to distract us so we can lose focus on the Lord, especially when trying to comfort mothers or fathers who lost children. Okay. Now focus, guys. Can we now focus? Can we focus? What an insult to these women. I'm trying to comfort them. He's talking about Muhammad. What an what a insult. I'm trying to comfort our sisters who lost their children to show them their children are alive and don't doubt it because Jesus is real and he's alive and he cannot lie. Oh, but the Muslims say this. Really? All right. Yes, Jack. The, you can make a case that even animals continue to exist but that's another topic for another time unless jack raider you're making fun then i'm going to raid your house right and then i'm going to have to lay hands on you and bless you so everyone with me now are we now ready to focus on jesus don't be the messenger boy or messenger girl of muslims don't be the messenger boy or the messenger girl of muslims okay don't be their messenger service Focus on Jesus, glorify Christ. If you're children of the living God, act like it. Don't act like dhimmis or servants of Mohammedans who are blasphemers who insult the true God. I don't know, Jack Raider. I can only judge you by your actions. So one of your actions is your name. So I don't know. I don't have access to your heart. Until I have access to your heart, I'm going to judge you by your actions. One of your actions is the name you chose, Jack Raider. I don't know what it means. You want to raid? Maybe, right? You know what I'm saying? Jack, I'm with you, Jack. Let's begin. Father, we love you. Lord Jesus, Son of God, we love you. Holy Spirit, we love you. Though we love you imperfectly, give us your power, Holy Spirit, to love you perfectly, to worship you perfectly, to obey you perfectly, to know the word perfectly, and to apply the word perfectly, and proclaim the word without shame and fear and compromise. Holy Spirit, we trust in you to make us more like Jesus in the way we live, the way we speak, the way we worship, the way we love in holiness and righteousness and purity. And we trust you to teach us the word because you are the perfect teacher and you inspired the word and you know what it means perfectly. So empower me, Holy Spirit, to glorify Jesus Christ by recalling the passages and interpret them correctly and to bless the household of the living God who are gathered. Holy Spirit, you know their needs. Meet them. Where they're at, 
and fill them with love and joy and peace and, and assure them Christ is risen and he is the Lord of glory and he's alive and we will live if we are united to him. And Holy Spirit, anoint the sound of my voice to be pleasing to the ears of your servants, please. And fill my lungs and my chest and throat with health to do this and strengthen the internet connection and destroy all distractions of the enemy. Please, Holy Spirit, please, we need you. We depend on you. We, we trust in you and we love you and we worship you. We adore you for you are the eternal spirit of the Father and the Son. Sent by the Father and Son to fill us and teach us and correct us and perfect us and sanctify us and preserve us for the glory of the Lord Jesus, the Father's heart who became flesh. And please, Holy Spirit, save me from the trials, from these corrupt <clears throat> judicial system and save my daughters. Save those family members that need to be saved. There are people here who have family members that need to be saved or need healing, whether emotionally psychologically or physically save them holy spirit for the glory of jesus and protect my daughters and save them from being defiled and damaged by the immorality that they see and save them from that and convict their mother and be a fire in her heart chastening her to fear the lord jesus and to walk in holiness to be a godly example for them bless this time holy spirit and bring them for the glory of jesus bring more people to listen to this and keep filling me with wisdom and knowledge to teach the depth of the word, not to bring attention to myself, but to bring all glory to Jesus, the Father, Son. Purify our motives, please, Holy Spirit, and provide for us. We need you. We love you, Father. We love you, Lord Jesus. We love you, Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, Yahweh, Father, Son, Spirit. Amen. Yahweh, Father, Son, Spirit. Yahweh, Father, Son, Spirit. Are we ready? Okay, now, I before I begin, you know it's my habit, right? And thank the Lord for the mods. They usually take the links to the articles and they put them in the description box. And then usually Protestant loser, he likes to change the thumbnails and beatify the thumbnails. He hasn't been doing it this past week because I haven't paid him enough and he's on strike. And so now he's on strike that I better start paying him or he's not going to be changing the thumbnails. It's all right. He's a hater, right? Okay, so with that said, I got... Tons of articles for you. Are you ready? Are you ready to click on the links, save the articles, and promise me to study the articles, try to absorb the information, share it with others, print them out, disturb them free, or download them, upload them, whatever the term is, to your sites. You ready? Are you ready for the articles? Because I got a lot. So I'm going to hold you responsible to use the material. It's free of charge. We produce these articles for you to use them in your Bible studies. Start a class. Use them. Not because my articles are infallible. As long as they accurately interpret Scripture, use them. But the only perfect Word of God is the Bible. Trust the Bible completely, provided it's been interpreted, translated correctly. Okay, here you go. Article number one. I got a lot. Article number one. Here you go. Article number one. Okay. That's one. Alrighty then. Click on it, save it. Article number two. Article number two. Second article. Folks, you don't need to be an Einstein. You need just to be yielding to the Holy Spirit. And falling before the feet of Jesus in prayer and fasting and worship and studying the word. Because God has given you the wisdom and the resources to enable you and equip you to teach the word. Right? Okay, so that was the second article. Article number three. Article number three. Here we go. Article number three. And I'm proof of that. No high school diploma, just the GED. No college, no university, no seminary. If God can empower a fool like me to glorify him, he can do wonders through you because he's real, he's alive, and he's almighty. Okay? Is that now the, that's the third article or the fourth one? See, I even lost count, man. Darn it. I'm stupid like that. One, two. Yeah, this is the third article, right? That was article number three. This just tells you I even confused myself because I'm very stupid. I'm very stupid, Andy. Article number four. What's up, Andy? <laughs> Andy? Yes, you can go to shamunin.com. 
this this uh, gentleman or his sister, I keep forgetting, man, is taking my information, putting it in one one site, shamunian.com. Okay, that's the fourth article. We were sailing along. I'll try to keep you under, entertained as we get the articles. We were sailing along on a moonlight bay. Here's the fifth article. Fifth article. This is now article number five. Don't confuse me, Naomi. This is the fifth article, right? Am I right? This is the fifth article? Okay, I see. See what you did, Naomi? You just confused me. You need to repent and face the East. Okay. Here is the sixth article. You're like, man, will these articles ever end? Okay. The sixth article. Article number six. My goodness. Will it ever end, Sam? Well... Okay, here's the seventh article. Seventh article. Hapsa, don't make me do Halal Hogan and make you pass out. If I was Halal Hogan, I'm sure you'd marry me. Okay, that's the seventh article. Seventh article. Okay. I think that's it. All right, yeah, that's it. Seven articles, folks. Ah, ah, ah. By the way, it, it, you got, how many of you grew up watching? Thank you, guys. God bless you for the super chats. Pray I start collecting them. They're right there, stored, waiting for me to collect them. So thank you, guys. Lord Jesus bless you. And thank you, guys, for supporting me via PayPal and Patreon because I'm in full-time ministry. Had it not been for the grace of God putting your hearts to do this, I couldn't do it. So pray God will now sanctify the money you're giving for his glory, sanctify it, and preserve it so I can use it to raise up my daughters in the love of Christ. So thank you, guys. Seven articles, all right? Ah, ah, ah. You guys remember seven, seven Sesame Street? What was it? Count Dracula? One. One article. Ah, ah, ah. Two. Two article. Ah, ah. You remember that? You guys remember that? Keep praying, guys. God has blessed me to lose a lot of weight, but I still haven't lost enough. I need to lose the rest of it until my stomach is flat because now my shirts have gotten big on me. Look how big they are. Thank Jesus. I pray I never gain weight. Three, three article. Ah, 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 ah. Okay. You got to admit, I got a face that even a mother has a hard time loving. I just looked at my expression. Ah, ah, ah. It's like I'm, you know, freaking myself out. Oh, my goodness. Because don't forget, there's a delay. When I speak, it takes about a couple of seconds for it to register. So I'm like a few seconds ahead of you. So you're seeing a delay. I'll say something and it shows up two seconds. So I'm catching myself. Doing these weird facial expressions. <laughs> See? See right there. Oh, my goodness. All right. Okay, folks, before I begin, I think I can take this off now. Yeah, I can take it off. Can you guys hear me? The music stopped. Glory to God. Can you still hear me? Because I want to go get me something to drink. Okay. Can I? You guys hear me? Because I'm going to get something to drink, and we're going to begin trusting the Holy Spirit to fill me for the glory of Jesus. Okay. So, Lester, I hope you liked the answer to your question yesterday. Now, no matter what you do, and by the way, when I do these things for the thumbnail, I'm just playing. I'm joking. People think I'm trying to be like, you know, uh, vain. I don't have muscles yet because I haven't been hitting the weights. And if you actually pay attention, one of my biceps is bigger than the other, right? Because I haven't been able to work out. But anyway, no matter what you do, I'm going crazy. I'd rather be alone. So I'll be singing so you don't get bored. This is part of live stream. Things happen. I need something to drink unless I pass out because I'm thirsty. I love you and I hate you and I love you. Oh, no matter what you do, I'm going crazy. I'd rather be alone. I love you and I hate you. Oh, oh no, no, drink it I'm gonna do is it paparazzi? No matter what you yeah, that's it. Yeah, yeah. I he did a duet with Celine Dion. I love you and I hate you. Oh. <clears throat> Sorry, see my voice is still needs to warm up. Don't hate, participate. Stop hating, guys. That chair, imagine I'm there, but I'm, I'm invisible. Right? So you can tell the Muslims, 
I'm actually a jinn. Why am I a jinn? I'm a jinn because I can appear and disappear. Showing you that I'm a jinn manifesting as a big, bald, beautiful Assyrian beast. No matter what you do, I'm going crazy. I'd rather be alone. I love you and I hate you. Ah. Okay, are we ready now? Who's dying? These sessions are not meant to cause you to die, brother. It's supposed to revive you. Okay. Okay. Been practicing, huh? Let's begin. Okay. Are we ready to begin? Kyle, were you the brother that asked me about John 526? You asked me how would I explain John 526 to an anti-Trinitarian? Because I remember someone asked me about that. And I wanted to answer it. Because that's what we're going to do. We're going to answer it right now. In one of the previous sessions, <clears throat> I spent some time unpacking what's called the prologue of John. John chapter 1, verses 118 is called the prologue of John. John chapter 1, verses 118, the first 18 verses of chapter 1 is believed to be uh, John's prologue introduction to the gospel. And John intends, as he's inspired by the Holy Spirit. Hold on. Let me, let me put this on again. As he's inspired by the Holy Spirit, okay, John intends that that prologue become the lens. Can you guys hear me? Can you guys still hear me? Just want to make sure because I heard the music going back on. Let the music play. He won't get away. Okay. John, John 1 verses 118 is believed to be the lens that the Holy Spirit inspired John to give you to read the rest of the gospel. What do I mean? We believe John is inspired. The Holy Spirit inspired John to give you what's called the prologue, the introduction. That prologue will serve to introduce the themes that John will unpack in greater detail in the rest of the gospel. And that pro prologue is also meant to be the lens that you put on, the Holy Spirit lens, to correctly interpret the gospel. So if you, if you interpret a passage in John in such a way that contradicts the prologue, that means you're, you're misinterpreting it. Are you with me there? If you take a passage in the gospel of John and explain it in such a way that contradicts the prologue, that means you're misinterpreting John. You're not interpreting the gospel with care, with respect, with reverence to the triune God. And I already did a session, and I went in-depth on this. What I'm going to do today with the prologue I'm going to look at it from a different angle, an angle in which to expose Unitarian heretics who are not Christians, but agents of the devil, deceived by the devil, to pervert the Bible to their shame and humiliation in order to rob Jesus of his glory. I'm going to now address their misinterpretation of John 1. Now, in John 1, this is what I'm going to seek to accomplish. Let me know if I'm making sense. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, you understand, because I want to teach you the depth of Scripture as the Spirit enables me to do so. So you can understand the Word, have no doubt about the Word, love the Word, and live it out in the power of the Holy Spirit for the glory of Jesus Christ. Okay? Now, John teaches that the eternal Word, the Word, the Greek is logos. This eternal Word is an actual divine person. He's an eternal person who existed in fellowship with God the Father before creation. And that eternal word then becomes a human being. He becomes the flesh and blood Jesus of Nazareth. So according to John, Jesus of Nazareth is the human enfleshment, the human incarnation of the eternal word. The eternal word is not simply God's plan or idea, but an actual eternal person who existed in eternity with God the Father, and that eternal word then became a human being called Jesus of Nazareth. Everyone with me there? I'm going to give you the proof. Before I move on, I'm going to repeat myself more than once until it becomes second nature by the grace of God. Okay, now... 
<clears throat> what I'm going to show is everything said about the word in John 1 verses 118 is then said about Jesus in the narrative. Let me repeat that again. The things that John says about the word, he then says about Jesus in the narrative when he discusses the sayings and deeds of Jesus. Further confirming and establishing that Jesus is none other than the eternal word who became flesh. That Jesus is the human enfleshment of the eternal word. The word became human and took on a human identity. And that human identity is Jesus of Nazareth. So you understand what I want to accomplish in this session. And hopefully it won't bore you, but it will bless you, strengthen you, amaze you for the glory of Christ. Uh, Quirti, you should know I've been divorced. What's that got to do? You're trying to marry me? Look, Quirti wants to marry Quirti, why are you trying to marry me, sister? I think uh, Quirti is a sister. Are you proposing? By the way, I don't know if Quirti is a boy or, or Oh, you're a guy? Hey, man, don't you be hitting on me, bro. That's a sin. You know that, right? Quirti, that's a sin. Don't you be hitting on me. It's a sin, brother. Okay? You and I both know that God only has ordained heterosexual marital unions, one born male and gender, one born female and gender, coming together in holy matrimony. So, Quirti, don't you ever, ever... Try to hit on me again. Fight your urges. Repent, brother. Repent. Stop that struggle because I don't want to be a stumbling block to you. Okay? Anyway. Hey, listen. You can have a brother struggling as long as he doesn't succumb to those struggles and justify them but overcome them, right? Hey, is it my fault that I'm so handsome that even men stumble? Forgive me. I don't want to be a stumbling block. Redeem, pray, I keep losing more because I still am not where I need to be. All right. Now, are we focused on what I want to accomplish in, in today's session? Guys, I didn't know I was that good looking that even men stumble. Guard your hearts, men. Die to your desires. Crucify your flesh. Because we know, and all joking aside, we do know this. The Bible condemns homosexuality, lesbianism as an abomination to the Lord. We will never justify it. Even if they throw us in jail and persecute us. Jesus is worthy that we love him more than our freedom. So be it. Throw us in jail. We will not pervert the gospel and shame Jesus just to tickle your ears. And it's ironic that this came up. I have a cousin whose son is gay and he's about to get married and he sent out an invitation to his gay wedding. I'll be the last person to attend his wedding. And if I attend, I'll be rebuking them saying, repent of your abomination. This is sin. And it's filth against the Lord. Yes, Muhammad Ibn Jadis. I'm Assyrian, not Arab, but Assyrian. All right. So anyway, with that said, are we ready? Yes, yeah, Sargun. Yeah, unfortunately. We have a lot of Assyrians who are embracing homosexuality because the West <clears throat> emboldens them to come up with this sin and not be ashamed of it. Okay. Now, with that said, let's focus now. Let's re regroup and focus. So you understand what I'm going to accomplish by the grace of God's spirit. I'm going to show you that everything said about the word is then said about Jesus in the gospel, destroying the Unitarian lie that the word is not a person who becomes a human being, but is simply an idea. Because these Unitarian her heretics, Christadelphians and Socinians, they'll tell you that the word is God's plan of salvation, that the word is an idea. God's plan, his idea for salvation, that became a reality when he created Jesus to accomplish salvation. So you understand what they believe? These heretics believe that the word is not an actual divine person. The word refers to the plan of God to save. And what's that plan to save? To create Jesus to save mankind. So they don't believe the word is a person that became a human being. They believe the word is a plan, an idea, God's plan, idea to save, that Jesus then accomplished when God created him. Yeah, remember, it's Philo, though. You're in a pickle if you don't quote Philo. 
Sargon, that actually proves their point. They believe that Jesus who prayed to the Father is a human being that prayed to God. You get started. So I'm now going to refute that. Are we ready? Are we ready? No, Candace, they don't even believe the idea was born of a virgin. That when Jesus was created from his mother, he then fulfilled this plan. He made the plan a reality. But I'm going to show you that according to John, the word is an actual eternal person that becomes an actual human being. He becomes in flesh, takes on a human nature, a physical body, and that human being is Jesus Christ. So let's begin. But I need you to now focus. Don't go into side tangents, side issues. Focus with me. Are we ready? Okay, are we ready? I hit that like button, folks. Let's focus. Don't let Satan distract you. Focus now. Let's unpack the prologue. Let's start with John chapter 1, verses 1 to 3. Jack, do me a favor, buddy. Let's not get into side discussions. Let's focus. Don't let the devil use you to distract. Yes, we'll talk about that in a minute, Kay Johnson. John 1, verses 1 to 3. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. Okay, first point. Are you ready now? Are you ready for the first point? Because if you're not ready, you're not going to benefit. I want to show you how deep the word is, how amazing the word is. It says, in the beginning was the word. The word was with God. The word was with God. The word was with God. That phrase, with God, is pros on theon. You don't need to know Greek, but that the word with God is pros on theon. Okay, now watch here. Let me give you the link. Hold on. Let me give you the link. Oh, my goodness. All right, hold on. All right, hold on. I want you to walk, and I hope the Holy Spirit will put your hearts on fire with passion for Jesus. Okay. Don't take my word for it. Thank God for the free resources on the Internet, modern technology. Go there. You're going to see right there. I gave you the link. Click on it. You're going to see it says, with God, pros. Preposition, pros, tantheon. Okay. The word with in Greek is pros. The word God is tantheon. The God. Exactly. She just gave you the Greek. And arche and hologos. Ke, hologos, and pros tantheon. Ke, theos, and hologos. Thank you, Anna, for posting Greek to give me more opportunities to practice Greek because it's all Greek to me. <laughs> Now, Anna Chung, why did you just quote Psalm 82? Do you want me to send you on your merry way, Anna? What was the point of quoting Psalm 82? Hold on. Psalm 82, verse 6, which is quoted in John 10, 34. Oh, sorry. Sorry about that, Anna Chung. Forgive me, please. Cordy. Cordy, you, you know you're going to have to leave this session, right? Cordy, sorry about that, Anna. Forgive me, sister. Uh, Cordy, you got to leave now. Leave at your own free will or I'm going to block you. I don't want you here for this session. Sorry, Anna, I didn't know that he was asking you and you brought it up. But because Cordy distracted everyone, he's got to go. Cordy, you need to leave. Cordy, you need to leave. I'm going to give you 10 seconds to leave. Or you're going to get blocked because you just disrespected everyone by bringing up an issue that has nothing to do with the prologue because you're impatient. You even asked about whether I was divorced. You're, you're selfish and rude. You can't be here. So you need to leave. No, no, you need to leave. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, Two, one. You better be out of here. I'm going to block you. Okay? You're being selfish and rude and thinking about yourself and not about anyone else. And you're not letting me finish the prologue and its explanation. And you're distracting me to distract people. Guys, forgive me, but expect Satan to do this so we don't get into the meat of matters. Okay? 
Is QWERTY gone? Do me a favor, Riaz. Block him, please. Because I think he's still <clears throat> hiding. Block him for me, Riaz. Folks, you understand. Let me let me repeat this again. You understand when you bring up irrelevant issues that have nothing to do with the topic, you distract me to distract the brethren here, right? And you're allowing Satan to win, and you're prolonging a discussion that shouldn't take this long for me to finish. You know that, right? And I'm not going to tolerate it on these sessions because time is limited. I want to make the most of the time to bless you. And Anna, forgive me. I didn't know that he was being the satanic distraction. I'm sorry about that, sister. Okay? Okay, so let me repeat what the word with God means. See, I got to do this over again. The word was with God. With God. The Greek word for with is pros. God is in Greek kan theon. But God. Okay. So do you see it says, and the word was pros tan theon. Now I'm going to show you how this proves Jesus is that word who became flesh. Are you ready now? How does this prove that Jesus is that eternal word who then became flesh? Are we ready? Okay, let's go to John 13, verse 3. John 13, verse 3. Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands and that he was come from God and went to God. Okay, do you see that word, to God? So Jesus came from God and was going to God. To God. You know what the word is in Greek? Cross tan theon. That's the first connection. Here, let me give it to you. Cross tan theon. So Jesus came from God and was going to God. Cross tan theon. Click on the Greek. She just gave it to us. Edus o isus hati panta dedokain auto o pater is tas chairas ke kai. Hati apo theu excelte kai ke proston theon upege 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 dadri pajit don't help me by posting verses do you want to stay here don't help me please okay go there click on John thirteen three Sienna I'm I'm studying Greek so I can marry a Greek Orthodox Christian who's beautiful and loves Jesus. So, uh, so I can we I can speak Greek to her. Tikanis kesikala agape. Anyway, okay. Are you with me there? You paying attention? Are you paying attention? Okay. The word was prostantheon. Jesus is going to God. Jesus is going prostantheon. Do you see the connection? The word was. Pros ton theon. Jesus is going pros ton theon. Same language used of the word being with God is used of Jesus going to God. Did you catch it? Who's not getting that it's the same Greek expression? John 1 1 and 2 says the word pros ton theon. John 13 3 says Jesus came from God and was going pros ton theon. Jesus prostantheon, the word prostantheon. That's the first connection. Everyone got it? But let me make another point. And this is the point I made against that oneness heretic pastor that I debated and Andrew Griffin. Let's look at John 13, 3 one more time. And I hope this is not boring you. I hope it's blessing you because at times we'll laugh, at times we'll cry, at times we'll be moved and... But again, I want to educate you, not bore you, and not necessarily entertain you. Now, now pay attention to John 13, 3 again. Pay attention again. Post it one more time, Protestant believer. I want you to pay attention. This is how you unpack the meat of Scripture, showing that Christ is that eternal word who existed eternally as a person with God the Father before he became flesh, and that Jesus is the human enfleshment of that eternal word. Okay, pay attention to what John actually said. 
Jesus had come from God and went to God. Jesus had come from God and went to God, right? He came from God and went to God. Go back and re-listen to my debate with Andrew Griffin, that Unitarian heretic, and also listen to my debates with that oneness modalist pastor, Stephen Ritchie, that heretic. Those debates with Stephen Ritchie are on David Wood's channel and first and last YouTube channel. I brought up the same point to both of them, and he didn't know how to respond. Here is the question you asked them. Say, Jesus going to the Father, is that something he actually does? Does he actually go to the Father as an actual person or as an idea? Well, I didn't know that they knew about me, uh, Samuel Musa. Okay. Did Jesus go back to the Father or go to the Father as an actual person? He went there as an actual person to have actual fellowship with God? Or did he go back as an idea? When it says he, Jesus was going to God. So he went as an actual person, right? Face to face, actual fellowship. But then why would you take that part as actual that he goes to God actually as in a person, as an idea. But the first part where it says he came from God, that's not actual. That's simply an idea that became a reality. You see that in John 13, 3? You can't have your cake and eat it too. If the second part means that Jesus went there as an actual person, that means the first part, he came down from God as an actual person. Because you notice that it says he came from God and was going to God. If the going to God is actual, he goes as an actual person, then the coming from God into the world means he was actually a person with God that came into the world to become flesh. You can't take one literally and the other allegorically. Making sense? Is it making sense before I move on to the next point? Folks, if you understand these objections... I promise you, by the power of Jesus, you will demolish and destroy Unitarianism and modalism as doctrines of the devil. Okay? So that's one. Let's go to another one. No, not always, Michelle. No, no. Don't overstate your case, Michelle. Don't make that argument because they'll show you examples where the word process is not used of persons in relationship with each other. So that's why I'm giving you arguments that are irrefutable. They can't get around. So be careful, Michelle El Saif. Okay? Are we focused now? Rebuke Satan in the name of Jesus and focus. Second example. Are we ready for the second example? Prost is used. Okay? The second example. Okay. This one is a little lengthy, but I need you to read it. John 16, 25 to 31. John 16, 25 to 31. Samuel Musa, how do you know the Tadrus family? Do you know them? John 16, 25 to 31. Okay, now read with me, folks. Read. These things have I spoken to you in Proverbs, meaning parables. But the time cometh when I shall no more speak unto you in Proverbs. I won't speak parables or figurative speech anymore, figuratively. But I shall show you plainly of the Father. I will speak plainly about the Father. Guys, you got to really pay attention to this. All the, uh, uh, at that day, you shall ask in my name, and I say not unto you that I will pray the Father for you. For the Father himself loveth you. Why? Because you have loved me and have believed that I came out from God. You have believed I came out from God. Now, here's the key, 28. Memorize this section. I came forth from the Father and am come into the world again. I leave the world and go to the Father. Notice, I came forth from the Father and come into the world. Again, I leave the world and go to the Father. His disciples said unto him, Lo, now, now speakest thou plainly. Now you speak plainly. You're not speaking figuratively. You're not speaking metaphorically. You're not speaking allegorically. You are speaking plain speech. Literally, so we can understand you. And because you now you speak plainly and we're understanding you, notice what they say. Now speakest thou plainly and speakest no proverb. 
Now are we sure that thou knowest all things? You know all things, and needest not that any man should ask thee. By this we believe that thou camest forth from God. Now notice Jesus doesn't rebuke them. Jesus answered them, do you now believe? This section here is meat. Let me tell you why it's meat. Jesus is no longer using parables or figurative language. He's speaking plainly. His plain speak gets the disciples to finally understand and realize, wow, you did come from God and you know all things and you don't need to be tested whether you know all things. We don't need to ask you questions to, set, to, to test to see if you know what you're talking about. We're now convinced you know all things. You came from God. Irony of ironies for the Unitarian heretics. When Jesus speaks plainly, speaks literally, they get it. You are speaking plainly, literally. And now we understand what you've been telling us. So you came from God into the world and you know everything. Wait. Jesus' plain language results in the disciples and believing he's omniscient. Even while on earth as a man, he's omniscient. And Jesus' plain language leads them to realize he actually came from God the Father into the world. Exactly, Christos and Esti. Did you catch it? But here's where it gets beautiful. Here's where it gets beautiful. John 16, 28, post it again, Protestant, because I'm going to show you how it connects with John 1. Okay, John 1, verses 1 and 2. Okay, now notice what it says. I came forth from the Father and come into the world. Again, I leave the world and go to the Father. Let me show you what the Greek is for go to the Father. Pay attention, folks. No side discussions. Focus. Okay. Pros, ton, patera. There's that word pros again. Instead of prostantheon, with the God, it's prostant patera, with the Father. There it is again. So let me ask you guys a question. Yep. Excelthon, para tu patros. Que elele luza, istun cosmon, palen, afiami, ton cosmon, que poreo, poreo mai. Proston Patera. Anyway, do you guys catch it? Uh, get user out of here. He's, he's here mocking, obviously. Okay. Okay, did you catch it? Jesus says, I'm going to the Father. To the Father. Pros tan patera. Pros tan patera. Do you see that word pros again? That's John 1. Now, let me ask you a question. Would any Unitarian heretic deny that Jesus literally went to the Father as an actual person, not simply as an idea? That he went to the Father in heaven as a person in a face-to-face -face relationship. Would anyone deny that? Would anyone deny that? So then now they're in a jam, aren't they? If going to the Father means he went there as an actual person to have face-to-face -face relationship, then what about coming forth from the Father into the world? Notice it's all part of the same sentence. I came forth from the Father into the world. Again, I'm leaving the world and going to the Father. If the going to the Father and leaving the world is actual, then the coming forth from the Father into the world means that he must have been a person who came forth from the Father as a person to enter the world to become man. You can't have one without the other. You can't have one without the other. Do you see how you destroy modalism and Unitarianism? I'm not lying. You destroy it. You show it's a satanic perversion of Scripture. Are you with me there? And notice Jesus is speaking plainly. And they get it. So what did they get? You are omniscient. Even while uh, as a man on earth, you know everything. You're omniscient. 
And you actually came out of the Father from heaven into the world as an actual person to become flesh. And you're actually going back. We get it. And we believe it. And Jesus says, finally, you get it. You finally figure it out. But now let's look at something else again. John 16, 27, 28. Yeah, that's after the resurrection, Michelle. John 21, 17. What I did was I showed you that even before his resurrection, on earth, he was all-knowing. Because it's not either or, it's both and. No, Kyle, it doesn't. Omnipresence would actually prove modalism, Kyle. You're going to bury yourself with that argument. Don't use omnipresence. It's going to work in their favor against you, Kyle. Don't use that argument. Okay, now, pay attention. That's why it don't help me to help you, Kyle. Just listen and learn for the glory of Christ. Okay? One means yes. Two means no. Okay. John 16, 27, 28. Pay attention again. How this, again, connects Jesus with the word in John 1. For the Father himself loveth you, because you have loved me and have believed that I came out from God. Now, notice, I came forth from the Father and come into the world. Come into the world. Again, I leave the world and go to the Father. Prostan Patera. Now, let me show you how this connects Jesus with the word in John 1. Let's go to John 1, verses 1 to 2, and John 1, verse 9. I have no idea what Jax is talking about. I hope he's not mocking because he's going to be blocked. John 1, verses 1 to 2. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God, and the Word was God. The Word was with God. Pros tan theon. He was with God in the beginning. Pros tan theon. But now notice verse 9. That was the true light, which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. Did you catch it? The light, who is the Word of God, came into the world. Jesus came into the world from the Father. And now he's going to leave the world to go to God, to the Father. Pros tan theon, pros tan patera. Could John be any clearer that Jesus is that word of John chapter 1? Okay, send this wicked, stone-kissing, Mohammedan rapist like his wicked, filthy prophet to the black stone. Send him. And get Jacques, Jacques to stop distracting. And Jack, don't engage people who are distracting. That was the wrong Jack, by the way. It was Jacques. He was Jack. But anyway, did you catch it? Like the word, the true light, Jesus came into the world and was with God. Tan Theon. Are you making the connection? You see how much Satan's trying to distract us? But everyone getting it? Do you see how clear John makes it? Jesus is that word who became flesh. The word is not simply a plan in God's mind. The word is a person who became Jesus of Nazareth. And I'm not done yet. If there's someone confused, let me know, Sam, confused. Anybody confused or everyone's getting it? Come on, Caleb. Caleb, friend, no Unitarian would be that stupid to say that Jesus is an idea in heaven. Come on, man. Don't hurt me, Caleb, because you're going to make me hang myself with my shoestrings. I'm going to hang myself with my shoestrings because of that, Caleb. Okay. Punisher, what do you want me to repeat? Where, where are you getting confused? Help me to help you before I move on to the next point. Okay, send Jacques, this barking rabid dog, to his mommy, to his vomit. Jacques Jacobi, a stupid. I don't want to sell dogs. They're too clean. Okay, Punisher Lee, help me. Help me to help you. No, don't time it out. Send him on his merry way, Hafsa, or you'll never hear Halal Hogan again. Your punishment is you'll never hear Halal Hogan again. Punisher, I didn't say John 1.9 says with Patera. What did John 1.9 say, Punisher? The true light came into the world, right? Punisher? Okay. The true light came into the world, right? That's what it said, John 1, 9. Let me help Punisher Lee, guys. Hold on. And Punisher Lee, you don't even need to write these out. Go back and read my articles. It's all there. But that's fine. If that's going to help you learn, fine. Didn't John 16, 28, Jesus say that he came forth from the Father and came into the world? Notice, like the true light came into the world, Jesus came into the world. 
And like the word, who is the true light, is with God, prostantheon. Jesus is going to God, to the Father, prostantheon, prostantpatera. Making sense now? Of course, Christos and Esti. Do you know why they're distractions? Satan is angry because Jesus is being glorified. But help me to control the situation by the power of Christ. So Punisher Lee, are you getting it now? So Punisher Lee, is there any doubt that John describes Jesus in the same way he describes the word in the prologue? Any doubt? Yeah, I know. Terrianism is dead. Like your mother died when she looked at your face and passed out. Say da dru pajit to the doghouse. Okay. Are we ready now for the next points? Are we ready now for the next points? If no one's confused, there's a lot of meat to unpack. We haven't, we're not done yet. Can we go to the next point? Okay. Let's go and see what John says about the word. John 1 verse 4. What does John say about the word, the logos? John 1 verse 4. And this I'm going to have to take a few minutes to unpack. Okay. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. Okay, catch what John says about the word. Punish everyone. Louisa, get ready to be blown away. How irrefutably clear John is that Jesus is the word. In the word was life. And that life was the light of men, right? In the word was life, and that life was the light of men. So the word is the light of men who illuminates mankind to find their way to life. In him was life, and that word is the light of men, illuminating them to find that life in him. All right. Let's see what it says about Jesus. John 8, 12. John 8, 12. And that life was the light of men. John 8, verse 12. Then spoke Jesus again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Whoa, I'm blown away. That's John 1, 4 right there. John 1, 4, the word has life in himself, and that life is the light of men, illuminating them to find their path to life. What did the historical Jesus say? I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Why is Jesus speaking as if he's the word? Did it, did it sink in before I move on to the next point? Uh, the one, how do you know that your mother isn't a dog in human form to give you the misleading impression that you're a filthy rabid dog of the devil? How do you know? How do you know that you're not a bastard child of the devil? Okay, anyone, you with me there? Do you see what it said about the logos, the word? And the word was life, and that light was the light of men. And the light shines in darkness, John 1, 5, and the darkness cannot comprehend it. The historical Jesus says, I am the light of the world, and he who follows me, shall not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. So is Jesus the word who became flesh? Or is the word an idea, a plan? Yeah, ego, I mean, two force, two cosmo. Everyone got that? John chapter 9, verses 4 and 5. John chapter 9, verses 4 and 5. Okay, watch. A lot of distractions today, right? I don't know what the good question is about the Old Testament. No one said good question about the Old Testament. I have no idea what you guys are talking about. John 9, verses 4 and 5. I must work the works of him that sent me while it is day. The night cometh when no man can work. As long as I am the world, I am the light of the world. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. Let me repeat again. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. John 1, verse 9. Compare that with John 1, verse 9. John 1, verse 9. Compare that with John 1, verse 9. Watch here. 
That was the true light, which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. So the true light that enlightens every man came into the world. Jesus says, as long as I'm in the world, I am the light of the world. Jesus, why do you speak as if you're that word? Why do you speak as if you're that word of the prologue of John? Why is it that what John says about the word you say about yourself? Everyone got it or no? Cal, if you want me to go off topic and answer your question and ignore the topic, see, now you're being disrespectful and not being patient. What's wrong with you guys? Kyle, are you serious? Let me go off topic because you're more concerned about the Old Testament than the New Testament. Pathetic. You know that, right? Okay. John 12, 35 to 36. Yeah. Yeah, it is your bad, Kyle. It's not my bad. It's not my mother's bad. I just got done saying, don't distract people and distract me to distract people. But you guys have no respect. You really don't. You're very disrespectful. John 12, 35, 36. Okay, watch here. Then Jesus said unto them, yet a little while is the light with you. Walk. Okay, okay get Godspeed out of here too, this dog. I'm going to muzzle dogs left and right for manifesting. John 12, 35, 36. Then Jesus said unto them, yet a little while is the light with you. Walk while you have the light, lest darkness come upon you. For he that walketh in darkness knoweth not whither he goeth. While ye have the light, believe in the light, that ye may be the children of light. These things spake Jesus and departed and did hide himself from them. John 12, 46. John 12, 46. Amen, Max. That tells you that Satan's getting angry, Max, because Jesus is being glorified. Jesus again speaking. I come a light into the world. That whosoever believeth on me should not abide in darkness. Compare that with John 1 verse 9 one more time. I come as light in the world. Monica, you need to go too. Send Monica out of here, please. Block. Please. Quickly, guys. I don't want numbers for the sake of numbers. I don't want numbers for the sake of numbers. I want... Robert, brother, I apologize. I'm going to have to get rid of you too. Because John 1.1 1, 1 is not about Genesis 1.3. When it says, let there be light, that's not Jesus. Robert, this is, this is not for you too. Guys, I'm going to start cleaning house because you guys are not listening. Let me try this again. I'm not interested in numbers for numbers. What I want is people who will listen because Robert just destroyed the eternal deity of Christ, but he's too stupid to see it. You know why? Because someone will tell you that in Genesis 1.3, when it says, let there be light, that light came into being. So because he's too stupid to see it, he just argued the Aryan position that God brought Jesus into being. Because he thinks he's helping me and he thinks he's smart. You see? You see the problem? Too many chiefs again. Not enough Indians. I want the channel to grow with people who are going to be serious and not think they know what they're talking about. So I have to correct them so they don't get embarrassed by heretics. Right? Only someone stupid would connect the light with Genesis 1-3. Because you have to articulate what it means and doesn't mean unless you make Jesus a creature. Okay? I'm trying to help you guys. Guys, let me just say it again. I'm trying to help you to make the most effective case possible for the truth of the Christian faith from the sound interpretation of the Bible so you don't get embarrassed by heretics who are going to use these arguments against you. I know they're going to use it against you because it's been used against me. Been there, done that, got the T-shirt. Learn from our mistakes so you don't make them. But I can't help you if you keep pontificating, there's that word again, chiming in and think you know what you're talking about. And get Salman Rushdie out of here so he can smooch the black stone too. Okay, everyone with me there? Sorry, guys, for all these satanic distractions. I got a clean house. Now, for the rest of you, did you get it? Did you get what Jesus just did? He claimed to be the word in whom was life, in whom is light, 
the light that shines to illuminate people to the path of, of salvation. Are you catching it? One more time. John 12, 46 with John 1, 9. Okay. John 12, 46 with John 1, verse 9. I am come a light into the world that whosoever believes on me should not abide in darkness. That was the true light which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. Yeah, get Yasin out of here because he's upset that his mother doesn't know whose father is of the 20 men that did muta with her. So he called Jesus a Satan because his father is Satan. Okay, did you see what Jesus just said? I come as light into the world. John 1, 9, that true light which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. So are you seeing irrefutable evidence that John is showing you that that eternal word is an actual divine person, not simply a plan, who became the human being called Jesus of Nazareth? Is that clear? Is that clear? No, Snow Leopard. No. Okay, John 1, verse 4. John 1, verse 4. One more time, because we're not done yet. A lot of meat to unpack. Help me to help you guys. Okay, John 1, verse 4. Okay, one more time. Okay. In him was life. In the word was life. And the life was light of men. Pay attention. In him was life. In the word was life. Don't forget that. Now go to John 5, 26. John 5, 26. These sessions shouldn't be difficult to understand if you just be patient and listen. Slow to speak, quick to listen, slow to anger. James 1, 19. John 5, 26. For as the Father hath life in himself, so hath he given to the Son to have life in himself. Now let's put John 1, 4 and John 5, 26 back to back. Okay. John 1, 4 and John 5, 26 back to back to see if you make the connection with Jesus and the Word. God bless you, Timothy. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. For as the Father hath life in himself, so hath he given to the Son to have life in himself. Did you catch it? The Word has life in himself. Jesus of Nazareth, being the Son, has life in himself. Did you make that connection? Life was in the Word. Life was in Jesus, the Son. So the Word in eternity had life in himself. The historical Jesus, the human Jesus, had life in himself. So only a blind person would fail to see that what's said about the Word in John 1 is said about the historical Jesus because that Word became Jesus. The Word is not simply an idea. Kyle, I don't know what your fascination is with the Old Testament and Yahweh. Kyle, I don't think this is for you, my channel. It's kind of too much for you, brother. I There's some people that just, it's, I'm not for them to teach them. Kyle, you need to go too, brother. Can you get Kyle Iron here? Yeah. No, Celestial. I know you're stupider than your parents and Muhammad. The kind of life that Jesus has is the life that he gives to others to live forever. Now, Celestia, don't block him yet, man. Oh, my goodness. <sighs> guys, I think I'm going to end this session. This is becoming too much to handle. You guys are not ready for this session, so I'm going to 
end it and I'm going to delete it. I'm going to do it some other time. Because you guys are not getting it. I cannot believe the level of distraction today and how you guys are allowing the devil to use it to distract, honestly. I really can't understand it. I'm just going to see if you guys are going to be able to control your flesh. I don't know. Lola, you need to go to get Lola out of here. Block Lola. Lola, you shouldn't be on a live stream. Just listen to me on video. Get Lola out of here. Yeah, Fred. Fred, you need to go too, right, brother? Okay, get Fred out of here. I want to see who's going to be used of the devil to open their mouths. Fred, bye-bye. Get him out of here too. See, I'm waiting. I'm waiting for the demons to manifest. Wait, wait. I'm not waiting to manifest. Yep, Jiffin. Who was who came first? Your mother or the dog? See? We're cleaning the house. You see how it works now? Yep, Revelation 19:13. You see how we're cleaning the house with the dogs? Wait, wait, wait. Well, they're manifesting, you see? They're manifesting. I'm waiting. I'm not stupid. I'm going to let them manifest. Come on. Celestial. Here, here, hold on. Before you move on. Celestial, you were the one who was stupid enough to say that we have life in ourself. Do you understand what Jesus meant when he said he has life in himself in that context? Guys, let me focus. Celestial, hold on. Guys, be patient. Do you understand? Celestial, why would you joke when you know I'm already being attacked by distractions of the devil. Distractions of the devil attacking. So I'm expecting that you're someone else trying to distract and attack. Why would you joke, Celestial? Stuck for a lot of blood, I mean. Hey, Allahu Akbar. Allah. Okay, you with me there? Hey, Christos and Esther, you all right too, brother? You all right? You hanging with me? See, I gotta, I gotta defuse the situation because it's getting ridiculously out of hand. Satan's really angry because Jesus is being glorified, right? Okay, I'm sorry, Muhammad Ibn Jars. You got scared because I did okay. Al Masihu Akbar, Al Masihu Akbar, Al Masihu Akbar. Is that better? Is that better? Father, be glorified. Lord Jesus, be glorified. Holy Spirit, be glorified in Jesus' name. Of course, Michelle. Didn't I do a fantastic sheikh in the Islamicized series? What's up, Boris? What's up, brother? I love Boris. If you guys don't know, Boris is a childhood friend. He, I'm older than him. His brother, Ninos, was one of my best friends. And he's like my little brother. And I love Boris. So pray for Boris. Pray for his family. That the Lord Jesus bless them. And by the way, Boris, tell Nasser to call me for my taxes. Say, repent and face the east. Love you, Boris. Thank you, Melanie. Okay, one more time. I got to diffuse the situation. Okay? I got to, because it's getting out of hand. Okay, one more time. Al Masihu Akbar, Al Masihu Akbar. Al Masihu Akbar. Hey, Asana. Oh, yeah. Oh, by the way, Boris will tell you, he remembers when I had hair and I used to be somewhat muscular, not like his brother who cheated, who did roids, but now he repented. We forgive him. So I'm a hater. I had to just badmouth him. Celestial, as long as you don't mock the, the triune God, you don't insult Jesus because I will throw you out of my channel and you don't distract. You can laugh all you want. Okay. Yeah, Boris remembers. I used to be somewhat muscular. Remember that, Boris? Can you testify to these guys? Boris is a witness that at one time I got to be like 220, a muscle, flat stomach, right? I had a V taper. Boris will tell you. 
And Boris also is still somewhat muscular. He'll tell you. Am I lying, bro? His brother used to be my training partner. See? Right there. True. Now, his brother, and I'm going to hate on his brother, ended up cheating, did roids. But now his brother has repented, and he follows Jesus Christ. He loves Jesus Christ. Yeah. Samuel Musa. I love your name, bro. Samuel Musa. All right, folks. Now that we got rid of the dis satanic distractions, the demons who started manifesting, can we now regroup and go back? Can we go back again? Can we focus? Because this is going to take longer than it should, and people will see the session two hours, three hours. Of the man, I'm not going to watch that. Folks, please help me to help you. So now let's do it one more time because you guys like it when I act like Muslim. Okay. Even Muhammad ibn Jaris, who, who wants to fall in love with Jesus, a Muslim who's leaving Islam, he says, yeah, listen. I listen. Okay, one more time so we can begin. One more time. Al Masihu Akbar, Al Masihu Akbar, Al Masihu Akbar. Hey, Assalam. Do you like that? I even turned red from saying it. Snow, be patient, Snow, before it rains on your parade. <laughs> okay. Are we ready now? John 1, 4 and John 5, 26, back to back. John 1, 4 and John 5, 26, back to back. You too, Ryan? Christos Anesti said the same thing, Ryan Giant. He said, I'm going to make it my ringtone. Let me know when you want to record it, so I'll do it for you guys. Okay, John 1, 4 and John 5, 26. Guys, please focus now. One more time, Protestant loser. Well, Anna, al Messiah means the Messiah is greater. Anna, I just said that Messiah, the Christ, is greater. So I'm praising Jesus. So don't worry about it. John 1, 4 and John 5, 26. Why, you don't want, you don't want me to say Messiah is greater, Anna? What's wrong? Okay. Guys, read with me. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. In him was life, and the word was life, and the life was light of men, and the light of men. For as the Father hath life in himself, so hath he given to the Son to have life in himself. Did you guys make that connection? The Word has life in himself and eternity. In eternity, before creation, the Word has life in himself. What does that mean? Meaning life comes from the Word. The Word is what gives life, biological life and spiritual life. What did the historical Jesus say? He, the Son, has life in himself to impart to others. So do you see the other connection between Jesus and the Word? That the Word is Jesus and Jesus is the Word. Are you making that connection? If someone's not getting it, let me know because I have to unpack John 5, 26. Okay. Look at this filthy dog. Okay. Right? So you see Jesus, like the Word, has life in himself. Why? Because Jesus is the word who became flesh. So far, everyone got these points because I got to unpack John 5.26. I may take the remainder of the session to unpack John 5.26. All right. Now, what does it mean for Jesus to have life in himself? Now, here's where I really need you to pay attention because there's an objection I need to refute. Good morning, Benjamin. Let's read John 5.25 and 26 to see... What it means for Jesus, the Son, to have life in himself. John 5, 25, 26. Guys, get ready to go into meat. Get ready to go into meat. Here's where you really need to focus and ask the Holy Spirit to help you. What does it mean for the Son to have life in himself? Here it goes. Here's the answer. Verily, verily, I say unto you, the hour is coming and now is when the dead shall hear the voice of the Son of God and they that hear shall live for... That word for explains how is it that Jesus can give someone spiritual and physical life, make them alive spiritually and physically. He's giving you the answer in verse 26. For as the Father hath life in himself, so hath he given to the Son to have life in himself. Did you catch what it means now? Jesus says the reason why I can give spiritual life to those who are spiritually dead as well as physical life, is because I have life in myself. 
So now if you made that connection, what does it mean for Jesus to have life in himself? What does it mean? Meaning life comes from him. He bestows life. The life you enjoy biologically is from Jesus. The life you receive spiritually is from Jesus. The life we experience, whether biological, whether marine life, whether plant life, whether spiritual life, comes from Jesus, but not Jesus alone. Jesus in union with the Father and the Spirit. Thank you, Anna Chung. God bless you. Lord bless you, sister. Are you with me there? Focus. Let's read John 5, 25, 26 one more time. John 5, 25, 26 one more time. Focus. Thank you, sister. No, nothing, Celestial. Focus. Verily, verily, I say unto you, the hour is coming, and now is, when the dead shall hear the voice of the Son of God, and they that hear shall live. When they hear my voice, my voice will speak life into them. My voice, my voice makes them alive. My voice gives life. And then he explains why. For as the Father has life in himself, so hath he given the Son to have life in himself. So did you catch it? It's not just the Son. The Father and the Son, both of them have life in themselves. What does it mean? Yes, who is it? Thanks for knocking door and scaring me. Hey, brother, come on in. It's all right. I'm teaching. Are you all right? All good? All good, man. It's all right. See, this is what happens when you live stream. You get to see my peeps. We're fixing that hole tomorrow. Okay, brother. God bless you. And I peep. Yeah. All right. Now, do you understand? The Father has life in himself, and the Son has life in himself. The Father and the Son, both of them have life in themselves. Are you with me there? What does it mean that the Father has life in himself? What does it mean that the Son has life in himself? It means the Father and the Son are the source of life. All life, any life that you experience is from the Father and the Son. Let me prove to you that's what Jesus meant. We saw that in 25, but let's read 21. Verse 21, John 5, 21. Focus with me. I'm giving you meat now. So you didn't get confused. Okay. For as the Father raiseth up the dead and quickeneth them, gives them life, even so the Son quickeneth whom he will. Did you catch it? Father and Son together raise the dead. Father and Son together gives life to whom they want. Why? Because Father and Son together have life in themselves. What does it mean they have life in themselves? Meaning they are the source of life. They give life biologically and spiritually. Oh, but you want to see the Trinity? Do you want to see the Trinity? John 5, 21. Guys, now here's where I want you to pay attention. Pay attention. We're going to put John 5, 21. Uh, Bill Shepard, that's the wrong question to ask me. How can the Father do anything independently from the Son and the Spirit? How can the Son do anything independently from the Father and the Spirit? So your question, and I say this respectfully, makes no sense because they can never act independently. That's why they're one God. If they could do so, then you have three separate gods. That's why I'm saying the question is wrong. Right? Okay. Here's the Trinity, folks. Pay attention. Trinity. We're going to now read John 5, 21. John 5, 26. John, 60, John 6, 63, back to back. John 5, 21. 5, 26. John 6, 63, back to back. And here's your Trinity. For as the Father raiseth up the dead and quickeneth them, even so the Son quickeneth whom he will. For as the Father hath life in himself, so hath he given to the Son to have life in himself. Now notice what Jesus says in John 6, 63. It is the Spirit that quickeneth. Wait, wait. Who quickeneth? The Spirit. The Spirit that quickeneth. The flesh profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. Okay, now I'm really confused. Jesus said, the Father quickeneth, the Father gives life. 
Then he says, he, the son, gives life. But then he says, the spirit gives life. Notice it's three and only three. You'll never find in the Bible a fourth person giving life. It's only the Father, the Son, and the Spirit that give life. The Father quickeneth, the Son quickeneth, the Spirit quickeneth. And this is all in the Gospel of John. No solo scripture. They only work together sometime. Sometimes they work together. Don't ask me these questions. These questions are obvious to answer. Don't insult me, Sola Scriptura. Are you with me there? So remember what John 5, 21 said. The Father quickeneth, gives life. So does the Son, raiseth the dead, and quickeneth, gives life. Right? The Father has life in himself. The Son has life in himself. What does that mean? Father and Son have the ability to give life biologically and spiritually, as does the Spirit. Now, let me show you other passages where this ability to give life is attributed to the Trinity. Acts 17, 24 to 25. Okay, get Celestial out of here. Get this dog out of here. Don't ever come back, you wicked dog. Acts 17, 24, 25. God that made the world and all things therein, seeing that he is Lord of heaven and earth, dwelleth not in temple made with hands, neither is worship with men's hands. Do you guys need anything from me? God, take care. God bless you. As though he needed anything, seeing he giveth to all life. God gives all life. And breath and all things. Okay. What about the Holy Spirit? Second Corinthians chapter three, verse six. Second Corinthians chapter three, verse six. Who also hath made us able ministers of the New Testament, not of the letter, but of the Spirit. For the letter killeth, but the Spirit giveth life. Okay, I'm confused. Does God the Father give life? Or does the Son give life? Or does the Spirit give life? All, all three. And only three. There's not a fourth. There's not a fifth. That's why we're Trinitarians. 1 Timothy 6.13. We're going to come back to John in a minute. 1 Timothy 6.13. Yep. First Timothy 6, 13. I give thee charge in the sight of God who quickeneth all things. God who gives life to all things and before Christ Jesus, who before Pontius Pilate witnessed a good confession. So wait, God the Father gives life to all things. And he quickeneth, gives life biologically, spiritually. The Holy Spirit quickeneth. He gives life biologically and spiritually. Jesus raiseth the dead, quickeneth, gives life to whom he wants. And Jesus is the one who sustains all creation and gives life to all creation. How do I know? Colossians 1, 16 to 17. Colossians 1, 16 to 17. Who sustains creation? Who gives animals life? Who gives trees life? Who gives insects life? Who gives humans life? Who sustains the planets and gives life in all its various manifestations? Colossians 1, 16, 17, the Son. For by him were all things created. The Son about Jesus, the Son. That are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him. He is before all things, and by him all things consist. The Son consists, sustains, nourishes, and preserves all creation that he made. You with me there? So let's go back to John 5, 25, 26.
We're not wrapped up yet because I, I got to refute an objection. Okay. So let's again look at John 5, 25, 26 one more time to understand what Jesus meant that he has life in himself. Verily, verily, I say unto you, the hour is coming and now is when the dead shall hear the voice of the Son of God and they that hear shall live. See, my voice speaks life. My voice brings life. My voice creates life. My voice gives life. Okay? And then he explains why. For as the Father hath life in himself, so hath he given to the Son to have life in himself. Meaning, you know why I can give life biologically and spiritually? Give life in all its various manifestations? Because I possess life, a life that I bestow on others. The Father and I, with the Spirit, are the source of all life. All life comes from the Father and me and the Spirit as the one God. Why do you think in John eleven twenty five 25, he says, I am the resurrection and the life. Or in John 14, verse 6, he says, I am the way and the truth and the life. Jesus, you're the resurrection and the life. You're the way, the truth, and the life. And you give life. To whom you want and raise the dead and life is in you? Yes. But isn't that true of the Father? Yes. Isn't that true of the Spirit? Yes. Is that true of anyone else? No. Only the Father, only me, only the Spirit. No wonder we are Trinitarians. No wonder we are Trinitarians. You will not find a fourth person... Set to be life and gives life. It's only the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. But what's the connection with John 1? In John 1, 4, who is set to have life in himself? In John 1, verse 4, who is set to have life in himself? The Word. In him the Word was life. And that life was the light of men. Jesus in the Gospel says, in him, the son is life. So do you see how clear the gospel of John is in showing you that eternal word is not a plan, destroying the lie of Unitarians and modalists. That eternal word is an actual eternal living person who becomes the human being, Jesus of Nazareth. Right? Because now I have to answer an objection. Now I have to answer an objection, and God willing, I'm going to do part two on John's prologue tomorrow, God willing. Sure, we will, Horizon. Horizon, right before, we'll, we'll ask him, we'll come in agreement to pray. Okay, here's the objection. Now I'm going to answer a desperate anti-Trinitarian objection. Joe's witnesses bring it up, Unitarians bring it up. Okay, are you ready? Now the Orthodox here. Already know the answer, as do traditional Catholics who believe in the creeds. Yes, Punisher Lee. God willing, tomorrow, 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Are you ready for the objection and how to demolish it? Oh, here we go again. EW, I want you to Skype me right now so we can have a debate. Otherwise, I'm going to muzzle you and block you from here. Are you going to call? Here's my Skype name. It's open. Are you going to call me right now to debate me so I can demolish your false god, the Satan that you worship? Benny underscore Malik 3. Are you going to call me? Yes or no? This guy again. Coward. Wides behind Greg Stafford's dress. Okay. Call me right now. Call me. Okay, guys. You're in for a treat. Let's see how long this guy's going to last. Go ahead, we're waiting. Let's see how long it's going to last. Hold on. You're in for a treat. We're going to muzzle a, a son of Satan. How long are you going to make us wait so I can know? Is to continue my discussion or stop? Hold on, hold on. Let's see. Yeah, he's, a, he's one of these cowardly JWs who hides behind Greg Stafford's dress. Are you there, buddy? Give me a time how long we should wait. Two minutes, five minutes, ten minutes?
He's not answering. We're waiting, friend. You're wasting time here. Man, we're going to have to edit this now. It's too long. Is he here? Sorry, guys. All right. Okay, well, let's continue with John 5, 26 until he calls. Are you ready? In Jesus' name. Are you ready? Okay, let's, here's the objection, John 5, 26. Okay, and it was asked of me earlier, and in a previous session, someone asked me to answer this objection. Okay, John 5, 26. Let's get ready. Read with me, John 5, 26. Abraham Yepshi, are you asking me sincerely or you're another dog that wants to attack the Trinity? Because I'm answering that objection, Abraham Yepshi. I want to know where you're coming from. Are you a Trinitarian? So I know how to address you. Don't go silent on me because I'm going to block you. You're a Trinitarian? You're a Trinitarian. Sorry about the nice set. Oh, boy. These guys take too long to answer. Are you a Trinitarian? Ten. Nine. Okay. All right. John 5, 26. Here's the objection. Notice what Jesus says. For as the Father has life in himself. GK, are you getting upset for him, GK? Are you getting upset for him, uh, GK? For as the Father has life in himself, so too he has given the Son to have life in himself. Ah, there goes your trinity. The Father gave Jesus life in himself. You see, he can't be God. He's not equal to God. You, you, you understand the objection now? This is the objection that these pathetic anti-Trinitarians bring up. Okay? You understand what the objection is? See, the Father gave Jesus this ability to have life in himself. He can't be equal to God the Father. See, that's it. It's game over. So then I ask, what are you trying to prove? Most of them are stupid enough to say, that the Father gave Jesus his life, meaning that the Father brought Jesus into existence. Okay, guys, here's where I need you to pay attention to know how to refute this objection. Some entertainers are stupid enough to say, see, it means the Father gave Jesus his life. He brought Jesus into being. In other words, if the Father hadn't given Jesus life in himself, Jesus wouldn't exist. That's how they interpret the passage. Now, let me show you how to demolish this argument. Are you ready? Are you ready to demolish this argument? Do you understand what the objection is? See, Jesus was given life by the Father. That means Jesus didn't always exist, but the Father brought Jesus into existence. So the assumption is, if the Father gave Jesus life in himself, that means Jesus didn't always exist. Now let me shut down this argument. Are you ready? You need to pay attention, or you're not going to get the point, and you won't be able to refute this blasphemous lie. Go to John 6, 53. Now, Abraham is a Trinitarian. So I'm going to ask him the question, and he's a Trinitarian. John 6, 53. John 6, 53. Watch here. Guys, you got to pay attention. Jesus speaking. Then Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, say unto you, Except ye eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, ye have no life in you. No life in you. Guys, can I ask you a question? Abraham, can I ask you a question? The people that Jesus was speaking to, were they already alive? Were they already conscious? Could they speak and be spoken to? Or they didn't exist? The people that Jesus was speaking to, were they already alive? Could they speak and be spoken to and hear and understand? Yes or no? Help me out, guys. They were alive, right? So number one, you just refuted the lie that life in yourself doesn't mean you don't exist. Here are people who are already alive and conscious 
even though they didn't have life in themselves. So that refutes the lie that Jesus having life in himself from the Father means he didn't always exist. Because did you catch this? Here a group of people that Jesus is talking to, they're obviously alive in some sense. They can hear what Jesus is saying. They're conscious and can react. And he says, you don't have life in yourself until you eat my flesh. So life in yourself cannot mean you didn't exist or you don't exist. Otherwise, who is Jesus talking to? People that don't exist? Are you with me there? You understand? Having life in yourself doesn't mean you don't exist. Are you catching it? I want you to catch it here. John 6, 53 again. If you get this point, then you will demolish these anti-Trinitarian heretics. One more time. John 6, 53. One more time. Then Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I send to you. So he's talking to them. So they hear him, right? So they're conscious. They're alive in some sense. For him to have this conversation with them. Except ye eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, ye have no life in you. But Jesus, if they don't have life in them, that means they don't exist. That's what the anti-Trinitarian dummy, that brain-ass anti-Trinitarian is telling me. That if you don't have life in yourself, you don't exist. So who are you talking to, Jesus? You see how stupid that objection is? You understand how stupid that objection is? So what does it mean when Jesus said, if you don't eat my flesh, drink my blood, you'll have no life in you? Meaning, if you don't believe in me, you won't be given everlasting life. How do I know it means everlasting life? Let's read John 6, 53 to 54. John 6, 53 to 54. Let me show you. Watch here. Then Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Except ye eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, ye have no life in you. Whoso eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood hath eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. So what Jesus is saying is, if you eat my flesh, drink my blood, and believe in me, then you will have everlasting life. That's what it means to have life in you. I will give you everlasting life, and I will raise you up at the last day. Folks, let me ask you a question. What kind of attributes must Jesus possess to be able to give all believers throughout the ages, no matter how, how numerous, give them never-ending life and raise them up? Here goes the heretic. Let's deal with this guy. Hey, you Aryan heretic, are you ready? All right, you wicked agent of the devil, are you ready? Hold on. Let's have fun. Okay. Open up your Bible to Hebrews chapter 1. Oh, you Hebrews like chapter 1? Yep, you even look like a demon. May God save you. Go to Hebrews 1. Read for me. Oh. Are you reading, reading the Jehovah yeah. Witness perverted Bible? I'm going to be using the revised standard. Of course, that's what heretics like you and Greg Stafford like to use. And I'm going to use it against you. Read for me Hebrews 1. And I want you to read verse 3. Hebrews 1, 3? Mm -hmm. Read that for me. It says, he reflects the glory of God. He bears the very stamp of his nature, mm -hmm. upholding the universe by his word of power. Okay. When he, when he had made purif purification for sins, mm -hmm. he sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high. Okay. Quote to me an Old Testament text where someone other than Jehovah sustains all things by his powerful word. An Old Testament text? Mm -hmm. Why? Why? There is there is no Old Testament text. No, say it again this. louder. They didn't hear you. Say it again. There is not an Old Testament text that points to someone other than Jehovah upholding everything with the word of his power. Okay, so everyone heard them, right? No one besides Jehovah in the Old Testament is set to sustain everything by his powerful word. Okay, go to Psalm 89, read verses 6 to 8 for me. Hopefully you repent of your damnable heresy. Let's see. Psalms 89. Six to eight. 
It says, for who in the skies can be compared to the Lord, who among the heavenly beings is like the Lord? Mm -hmm. So you said six and seven? 89, six to eight. Now, do you know what the Hebrew words are for heavenly beings? Uh, it starts with S. Samet, Samoan. No. What is the Hebrew words for heavenly beings again? It's there is no there. There wouldn't be a heaven. There wouldn't be a word for heavenly beings unless it's, I didn't ask you. I said, what is the words in Hebrew for heavenly beings? Angels. No. Is that what you're asking? No, no. Okay. So like, obviously you don't know what it says. All right. Literally, it's the sons of God. Sons of God. Yeah. E ilim. Ilim, plural of Yom. Okay, anyway, the sons of God in heaven, heavenly beings. Okay, keep reading. Sorry, right, that's fine. Keep going. Seven. A, a God feared in the council of the holy ones, great and terrible above all that are around about him. O Lord of hosts, who is mighty as thou art, O Lord, mm -hmm. with thy faithfulness round about thee. Okay, now my question, is any of the heavenly creatures, are they exactly like Jehovah? And what are any of the heavenly creatures exactly like Jehovah? Anyone no. that's the exact representation of God's being, according to what you just read? No. You, okay, say it out loud because I want everyone to hear you. Say it again. Are, are any of the ones uh, exactly like his being? Yes, exact representation of his being. Well, the Hebrews tells us that there is one. No, it doesn't. You're contradicting the Old Testament. Don't play that game. Because well, if no, the, I, well, I, let me finish I, the point. If Hebrews is consistent with the Old Testament and the text says who in the, hem, in the heavens above, heavenly beings, that doesn't exclude anyone. So there can't be a single one. No, but your view no, contradicts no, the Bible. There's nothing to be excluded because that's a question. No, it, it's, friend, not, it's not a thing. So then let's, let's play your game. So the rhetorical question is, who is like God? Oh, yeah, there is someone like God. Either you're dishonest because you belong to your father, the devil, or you're ignorant. This is a rhetorical question expecting a negative answer. No one is like Jehovah. Don't play that game with me. Don't play these but games this, with me. This, this, is, this, is, this is the game that you play because no. you talk about this. Is there anyone as mighty as Jehovah according to Psalm 89, 6 to 8? You talk about further is revelation. Is there anyone? No, no, hold on. No. Is there anyone Hebrew? like Jehovah? According to Psalm 89, 6 to 8, mighty like Jehovah. Well, there, it's not a statement. It asks the question. And the Bible asks questions expecting a negative answer, meaning, of course not. Don't uh, play until, that game. Until further revelation. Don't so we play have that revelation. game. No, because yeah. even in the Old Testament, Jesus was there according to your view. And they would have known of Jesus as a heavenly being because of the prophecies. Okay, You're embarrassing well, yourself. Okay, so, so, now, time, okay, now go to Psalm 102. Go to Psalm 102. By the time Psalm 89 go, go is written. Go to Psalm 102, no. verses 25 to 27. Psalms 102? Yeah, 25 to 27. See, but this this is where you Trinitarians do a sleight of this hand. This is where you Unitarians are of your father, the devil, to pervert scripture to your shame. So go to Psalm 102, 25 to 27. I know what, it says. I know what that says, but this is what Read I'm saying. It. You're doing Don't a tell us hand. what you know. Read it. Don't waste our time. Read. We're going to the text, not you. I could care less for your opinion. Read. You want me to read Psalm what the, what the, you, want me, you want me to read the text that is in Hebrews? Psalm 102, 25, 27. Read it. Yeah, see, this is what I'm saying. This is a slight. Read it, you coward, you son of Satan. Don't be afraid of the word. Read it. Prove you're not a son of Satan and a coward that you fear from the word. Read it. That's <laughs> <laughs> gonna, gonna That's it. what I'll do to you and I'm Stafford in a debate. The read it. That the writer is using. Psalm 102, 25 to 27. Read it. Twenty. Okay, Psalms. The one he's read. The one he's. Psalm one two says, verses twenty five, twenty seven. Don't get this complicated. Read. 
He it. answered him in the way of his strength. Psalm 102, 25 to 27. That's not what I told you to read. Psalm 102, Thank 25 to 27. See, so you're getting so nervous here. Read Psalm 102, 25 to 27. That was, I started in 23. Even better. So 24, I'm giving the full Okay, go ahead. go ahead. 24, take me not away in the midst of my days. Thy years are through all generations. So in the beginning, thou, O Lord, didst lay the foundation of the no, earth. No, that's not what it the says. Hold on, wait, 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 wait. What version are you reading of Psalm 102? This is, it's the Septuagint. Okay, so you decided to switch to the Septuagint. Now, in the Septuagint, the word Lord, I know you're stupid games, I'm going to embarrass you. The word Kyrios in Psalm 102 of the Septuagint refers to what in the context of that psalm? You see the dishonesty? You see what a wicked Satan is? He went to the English translation of the psalm. Okay. What is Kyrios? Okay, who is Kyrios in Psalm 102? It doesn't say that there. Who is Kyrios in Psalm 102? You wicked son of Satan. The Kyrios is that from, from Psalm 102 mm -hmm. is the messianic figure. No, it isn't. There is no messianic figure even in the Septuagint. Stop misquoting anti-Trinitarian sources. It doesn't. It's referring to Jehovah. There is no change of speaker. There is no messianic oh, no, no, figure in that psalm. Read, you're, you're read 18 to 27. I, you guys, you see what a wicked dog this guy is? You won't do it. You see what he just did, this wicked dog? Okay, final chance. Read Psalm 102. Stop barking like the dog you are. Read Psalm 102. Now you want 23? No, we'll read 18 to 27. We're going to play your game. Or I'm going to read it for you and embarrass you. Read. Read Psalm 102, 18 to 27. Slowly, we're going to hear it. You guys, okay. you see what he did? He went to the English translation of Pugin because he's a wicked demon. But go ahead. 18 says, let this be written for another generation. And the people that shall be created shall praise the Lord. For wait, wait, who's the Lord there? Wait, wait, who's the Lord there? Who's the Lord there? Hey, praise the Lord. The, who's the Lord there? The Lord there is God. Okay, guys, remember, the word is Kyrios. Kyrios, he said God. Now watch the tap dance. Keep keep going, because I have it right here, the English translation of the Septuagint. It's keep reading. Tap, it's not a tap dance. You, you just have to keep pay attention. Keep reading, to because I got it here in front of me. Keep reading. Oh, he has had. Da, 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 da. Let no, read it out loud. No, da, 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 da. read it out loud. No, da, 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 da. I was fine. My place. Let this be written for another generation, and the people that shall be created shall praise the Lord, for He has looked out from the height of His sanctuary. The Lord, that's God, looked upon the earth from heaven to hear the groaning of the fettered ones, to loosen the sons of the slain, to proclaim the name of the Lord in Zion. And his praise in Jerusalem, when the people are gathered together and the kings to serve the Lord. Again, that's God. Mm -hmm. And then it says, he, that's God, no, answered him yeah, yeah. in the way of his strength. Mm -hmm. So God is now answering Keep reading. This Shut your mouth and read. I God. got in front of me. Shut up and read. This is God saying, tell me. No, the it's not. That's not days. God. Okay, let me let me um, let me embarrass you here. Okay, wait, wait, wait. Let's let me embarrass you to show you what demon you are. Let's see, it's God. God answered him in the way of the string. Tell me the fewness of my days. So, God, guys, notice what this demon said. God is saying, Tell me the fewness of my days. Take me not away in the midst of my days. You see what a wicked demon he is? So now God is saying, Take me not away in the midst of my days. You just embarrass yourself and the demon you worship. Keep reading. No, I didn't, no, I didn't. Keep you're reading, not, you demon. Keep the, reading. Context. Read. The That's not God speaking. The, okay, bye bye, you wicked games. demon. You filthy Ooh. demon. Okay. Okay, you got it now. Hope you guys enjoy that. Do you see the demon now? That's what the demon did. He goes to the Greek version, the English translation, the Greek version, Psalm 101. Because he thinks it's going to prove his point. You see? Filthy, wicked dog. That's what you get, you dogs, for blaspheming God. Okay. Now, I hope you enjoyed that short encounter with these demons. Did, how many of you guys were entertained with that? When Shibrali, actually, Shibrali got decimated like your prophet, whom Jesus buried in hell. We spit on Muhammad because Shibrali won't debate me. If he defeated me, why doesn't he debate me again?
all right? We spit on Muhammad, even though our spit is holier than Muhammad. So send the tool of the devil to his prophet, Muhammad. Okay, understand? Let me show you the trick here, guys, before I move on. Okay. You know what they do, these wicked demons? They go to Psalm 101, the, the English translation of Psalm 102, which is Psalm 101, because they'll try to tell you that the, change, the speaker changes. It's not God. So you see how stupid he is? He wants God to say, remind me how few my years are. Do not take me away in the midst of my years. Do you see how stupid and demonic this person is? Why I have no respect for them? You understand what he was trying to do? What these anti-Trinitarians do, they misread the English translation of the Greek version of Psalm 102. Because in Psalm 102, which is Psalm 101, they read where it says, he answered me, and then they think it's now God, right, speaking. So now he has God saying, remind me how few my years are, and do not take me in the midst of my years. Can you believe what a wicked, blasphemous dog he is? God is saying, remind me, remind me how few my years are, and do not take, away, take me away in the midst of my years. Because they want God to be saying in Psalm 102, 25, you're in the beginning, O Lord. So they want God to be addressing someone else as Lord who created. But in their blasphemy, they're having God saying, remind me how few my years are and do not take me away in the midst of my years. You see the demonic, demonic, satanic distortion because they hate the true God. They hate Jesus, the true Jesus, because they're demons and sons of the devil. Do you guys understand that now? And you understand why he started because he admit to you nowhere in the Old Testament will you find someone other than God sustaining all creation, right? But in Hebrews 1 3, Jesus is sustaining all creation by his powerful word. If the New Testament doesn't contradict the Old Testament, Jesus has to be Jehovah God. You see that? And did you see what he said about Psalm 89? Who among the sons of God are like you? Oh, that's a question. Oh, so there are sons of God like Jehovah. You see, you're wasting your time. You understand why you're wasting your time with these wicked demons, these dogs? They're dogs of the devil, sons of the devil who cannot refute the truth. They embarrass themselves and, and the spirit that possesses them. EEW, you got busted. Glory to God, it's recorded. Now go to your idol, Greg Stafford. Tell him I'm calling him out. If he's a man, let him debate me because I'll decimate him worse than I decimated you. So... I hope you guys enjoyed that. Can we now come back? Okay. So are you seeing why these arguments are irrefutable? Yes, Lauren. He's saying that's God speaking because he doesn't want it to be the psalmist saying, in the beginning, Lord, speaking to Jehovah. He wants it to be Jehovah speaking of someone, meaning the Messiah, as the Lord. Because if he allows it to be Jehovah then that means Jesus Jehovah because Psalm 102, 25, 27 is applied to Jesus by the Father. So the Father is glorifying Jesus as that Jehovah God of Psalm 102 who is to be praised and worshipped, who is the immutable, eternal creator of all things. And he can't have that. Now, did you enjoy the decimation of this wicked demon? Everyone enjoyed that? Take no prisoners. Take no captives. Demolish them for their wicked blasphemy of who Jesus is, blaspheming him and twisting the scriptures to their shame. Now, let me finish John 5, 26. Okay? I'm not done yet. Are we ready? Are we ready? Let's finish it. I know it's long, but that's okay. The demons really came out today manifesting. But by the blood of Jesus, by the power of the Holy Spirit, we are demon slayers. We slay them by the sword of the Spirit, the word of God, and the blood of Jesus, which is our covering. Okay. Let's go back again. Did you understand the refutation of John 5, 26? Do you understand how to refute these sons of the devil? Sons of the devil and perverting John 5, 26. Did you see why Jesus having life in himself doesn't mean he was given life? Let's go back to John 6, 53 to 54. Let's finish it. John 6, 53 to 54. Let's finish it. I went longer than usual. Okay. 
Let's read it again and focus so we can sum up and we'll do part two tomorrow. Tomorrow. Exactly, Elias. You know we're glorifying Christ when all the demons manifest and try to attack us. Guys, now pay attention, please. Pay attention. Please pay attention. Then Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Except ye eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Now notice, he's talking to people who are alive in some sense. They're alive, they're conscious, they're existing. But he says you have no life in you. So you see here, life in you doesn't mean you don't live until you're given that life in you. So even if John 5, 26 means that Jesus was given life in himself at a later point, that doesn't mean he didn't exist prior to his being given life in himself. You understand what I'm trying to prove here, right? Even if John 5, 26 means the father gave Jesus life in himself later, that doesn't mean Jesus wasn't alive before that time because here Jesus is talking to people who don't have life in themselves and they're already alive. Path Seeker, why don't you shut up like the dog you are and you call me so I can muzzle you. You don't like it? Call me so I can muzzle you like the dog you are. Okay? Telling me, yeah. He couldn't make a point. I kept telling him, read and say, but uh, 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 all right. But you understand? So what does it mean that those people who are alive did not have life in themselves? Let's read John 6, 54. John 6, 54. I don't play when it comes to mocking and blaspheming Jesus. I don't play. I pray by the power of the Holy Spirit, I will live for Jesus and die for him if I have to. Now read John 6, 54. Read with me. Whoso eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood hath eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. So what does it mean? That they will be given life in themselves. What did Jesus mean? They'll be given life in themselves. It means they will be giving, uh, given everlasting life. Jesus says, if you eat my flesh, drink my blood, and come to me, then I will give you life in yourself, meaning I will give you everlasting life, and I will raise you up. Now, let me ask you a question. What kind of attributes must Jesus have to be able to give everlasting life to all believers throughout the ages where he causes them to live forever and what power and attributes must he have to then raise them up at the resurrection day? What kind of attributes must he have to give all believers throughout the ages never-ending life and to raise them? He goes, I will raise them up, resurrect them at the last day. What kind of attributes? He must be all powerful because he must be more powerful than death and he must be powerful enough to prevent them from ever dying and must be powerful enough to ensure they live forever. That's all mightiness. And he must be omniscient. Why? Because he must know who the believers are that are eating his flesh, drinking his blood. Who is it that's coming to him and believing in him? All right. So now did you see Having life in you doesn't mean you don't exist, that you didn't exist before you were given life in yourself. Did you get that point? Did that make sense? Life in you doesn't mean you didn't exist consciously before you were given that life in you. Right? Okay, so now let's go back to John 5, 26. What does it mean? That Jesus has life in himself from the Father. Let's unpack this because I don't want to end it without making sense of this passage. And God willing, I'll revisit it tomorrow at the opening. I'll repeat it again because this is something we need to hear over and over again until it becomes second nature by the grace of God. Okay, now let's unpack John 5, 26. For as the Father hath life in himself, so hath he given to the Son to have life in himself. Number one, that doesn't mean that Jesus wasn't existing wasn't alive before he was given life in himself. We just proved that, right? In light of John 6, 53, we just proved that. So what does it mean? Number two, this life in himself, Jesus explained. The life that he has in himself means his ability to give life to everyone. Remember what the context means. The context means I have life in myself in that I have the ability to give life to others. I can give life to someone. I can give biological life and spiritual life. So what it means here is 
the father was pleased to give Jesus his ability to give life to others, right? Do you understand what it means that he has life in himself? How do I know that's the meaning? Because John 5, 26 is explaining verse 25. John 5, 26 is explaining what he means that the hour is coming and it is now come where the dead will hear the voice of the Son of God and those who hear will live. Why? Because like the Father has life in himself, so too the Son has life in himself. What do you mean life in yourself? I have the ability to give life to everyone who hears my voice and believes. So you understand what it doesn't mean? It doesn't mean that the Father gave Jesus his life, meaning caused Jesus to exist, caused Jesus to live. That's not what it means. What it means is, Jesus has the ability that the Father does to give life to others. Father has life in himself, meaning he has the ability to give life to others. So too, I, the Son, have the ability that the Father has to give life to others. That's what it means. So even this passage doesn't prove the Father gave Son life so that the Son could live. It doesn't mean the Father caused the Son to live, to come into being. That's not the meaning. That's not what it means. Did you get? You understand? Is anyone confused? Or did you get the point? Because we went from 250 to 216, so we're losing people. They're getting tired. Anyone confused? Okay. So now, here's the question. If you're not confused, does this mean... That the son did not always have the ability to give life to creation, to give life to others. Because if the father gave him that ability to give life to others, does that mean he gave it to him in a moment of time? So that Jesus didn't always possess this ability? No, that's not what it means. See, Punisher Lee, if you're patient, I'm already answering your question. You with me there? Punisher Lee? Did you see? I'm already anticipating your question if you're patient. Okay, so notice Punisher Lee. Does this mean that there was a point in which Jesus did not have the ability to give life to others, whether biological or spiritual? No. Do you know why? Let's go back to John 1, verses 1 of 4. Let me explain. John 1, verses 1 of 4. And the Orthodox already get this. The Orthodox Christians here, the Orthodox Church already get this. Traditional Catholics who believe in the creeds already get this. You know who doesn't get it? Those Protestants who have abandoned the views of the church fathers and the councils and the creeds. Okay, now read with me. Read with me, Punisher Lee. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. Now read with me, Punisher Lee. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. Punisher Lee, pay attention to what you just read. The Word created all creation. Now, let me ask you a question, Punisher Lee. If the Word created all creation, doesn't that mean He existed before all creation? Because all things came into being by Him. Okay, so now, Punisher Lee, if the Word created all things, that means He exists before all creation. Doesn't that mean He existed in eternity so that He's eternal? Because what do you have before all creation? Eternity. So doesn't this mean the word is eternal? Punisher Lee? And you guys can answer too because I want to make sure you're getting it. I want to make sure Punisher Lee got it. He's not responding. This year, Punisher Lee, before the rapture. Okay. Now, Punisher Lee... It says, in him was life, and that life was the light of men. Meaning, the creation came into being and was given life by the word. Doesn't this mean that the word had the ability to give life before creation and, in, and had this ability in eternity? Because notice, he's the one who created all things, meaning he gave life to all creation. And he's the one who confers life on all creation. That means that ability to give life and confer it was already something he possessed in eternity before all creation, right? Right, Punisher Lee? 
You got it? So if Jesus is that word, then Jesus, before he became flesh, was the word who existed in eternity with the ability to give life to creation. So was there a point in time where Jesus did not have this ability to give life? Was there a point in time? Thank you, Punisher Lee. You just answered your question. Jesus, as the word, always existed in eternity with the ability to give life. So then why did he say the Father gave it to him? Now, are you ready for this point? And God willing, I promise you tomorrow, I'll start off with this, and hopefully the session will be shorter. We went from 250, 260 to 200. Oh, that hurts me. I want it to increase, not decrease, for the glory of Jesus. Okay. If Jesus, the Word, already had this ability to give life in eternity, that means he's always had it. There wasn't a time in which he didn't have it. He has always had it. So why did Jesus say the Father gave it to him? This is the language of the eternal begetting of the Son. Something the church always believed up until recent time. This is the language of eternal begetting. What does that mean? It means the life that Jesus possesses to give to others is the life of the Father that he shares in union with the Father that he partakes of in this eternal, inseparable relationship and union with the Father. In other words, what Jesus is saying is, the life I have to give is the life that belongs to the Father, which I possess because of my union with the Father. In other words, this is the language of eternal beginning. The Father is the source of life, and that life is mine because I'm inseparable with the Father, I'm one with the Father, and I've always existed in union with the Father. So the life I have is the Father's life that he shares with me, a life he shares with me eternally because I've always eternally existed with him and I'm inseparable from him. That's what it means. So it's not giving in the sense that he gave it in a moment of time. Giving in the sense that this life I have is the Father's life. He's the source of it, which I possess and share in eternally because I've always existed internally with him and he's never existed apart from me. That's what it means. Am I making sense? So do you see how John 5, 26, if you interpret correctly and properly, destroys and decimates these anti-Trinitarian dogs and Satanists who hate the true God that they will pervert the scripture to rob Jesus of his glory to their shame and humiliation. In other words, Punisher Lee and everyone else, we cannot help but describe this eternal being and these eternal relationships with language bound by time. Because we're creatures bound by time, everything we say has an element of time in it. So it's, it's the imperfection, the weakness, the limitation of human language that hinders us from perfectly describing how Jesus could always eternally possess life and yet the Father be the source of that life. So that the Son always had life and there wasn't a moment in his eternal existence that he didn't have that ability. You with me there? It's because of our finite, limited, imperfect language that gets us in trouble when we try to express an eternal being, an eternal reality, and eternal relationships. And Jesus, in his love, humbles himself to describe what he knows is beyond our ability to comprehend in our language to get an idea of what it means for him to be the eternal son who is inseparable from the father who possesses the Father's essence in all its fullness, perfectly and completely. Right? I hope that made sense. I hope truly you were blessed today because, boy, did we get attacked. But even though we got attacked, we endured by the blood of Jesus, the power of the Holy Spirit, and Satan was defeated again because of the blood of Jesus that shields us from him 
and the life that the Spirit gives us. You got a lot of meat today. Not only meat about the Trinity and the eternal generation, but you got conclusive proof that word of John 1 is an eternal person, not an idea, who actually becomes the human being called Jesus of Nazareth. And also you mothers and fathers of lost children, lost children, you got a word of encouragement because Jesus is alive and can never die. Your children are alive and they're not dead. What more do you want in one session? Christ is dying. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Jesus Christ is Jehovah to the glory of God the Father. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. We love you, Father. Son of God, we love you. Holy Spirit, we love you. Forgive me for shortcomings. Forgive me for any mistakes and sins. Save me from that and bless them if what I said was true and strengthen them and use this to bring true servants who want to hear to benefit from the knowledge you're giving me for the glory of Christ. And please preserve us. Preserve my daughters. Save them from this immoral relationship. Bring them to me, please, Holy Spirit. And please bless those who are in need. And this young man who's about to get surgery on his head, Holy Spirit, May it be a successful surgery resulting in prolonged earthly life, more years on this earth to glorify Jesus. You know who he is better than we do. Seal us for the glory of Jesus. We love you, Father. We love you, Lord Jesus. We love you, Holy Spirit, in Jesus' name. Guys, pray for me and my daughters. Pray my, my God, our God, will bring my daughters to me, will destroy this wicked judicial system, remove them from us. And put fire in their mother's heart. She has to stop this immoral relationships. She's got to stop bringing men into their lives. In ungodly relationships. I want better for them. Pray God will save them. And chasten her to repent. And remove this man. Please. That's my only burden now. Is that my daughters are under an ungodly influence. Of an immoral mother. In immoral sexual relations. She needs to repent and fear the Lord. So he can protect my children. I'm trying to be an open book. I need your prayers because I can't fight for them. Only God can. And it's been over two years and they haven't seen me since June. Pray for their sake. Not me. I deserve hell. But pray God will give them better. Love you guys. Lord willing, I'll see you tomorrow around 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for part two. Christ is risen, risen indeed. Take care.